Hattiesburg, Mississippi tonight. It is as big a sports event as this town has ever seen. They're here to see their Golden Eagles who always go on the road to face the big boys, take on one of the big programs of all time. Big Reds in Mississippi. Nebraska set to meet Southern Miss. College football Thursday welcomes you to Hattiesburg as the 2-1 Golden Eagles take on the 11th ranked undefeated Cornhuskers from Nebraska. Good evening, everyone. We welcome you to the start of the college football weekend with one of the better games this weekend. Nebraska, 41 years of unbelievable records and 7-7 seven and seven last year, their worst record in more than four decades. There was really some staleness in Lincoln, but they've changed things a little bit in the last nine months. New athletic director, six new assistant coaches, new offense, new defense, and the results so far so good. They're 3-0. and The defense has played phenomenal. The offense has been great running the ball, but we don't know about this team as a passing group. They've thrown only 39 times in three games. Tonight may go a long way to finding out how far back Big Red is. Their coach thinks they're in pretty good shape. Let's check in with Frank Solich. He's standing by with Dr. Jerry Punch. Well, Coach, for the second year in a row, you opened the season with three impressive wins at home, but last year you went on the road for the first time and the wheels sort of came off the Husker wagon. What are the keys tonight to make sure you don't stumble here in Hattiesburg? Well, we got to remain focused from the start to the end. we got to play four quarters of uh, physical Nebraska football, and that's that's what we plan on doing. I think uh, the attitude of this team is outstanding and uh, looking for a great effort. Thus far, offensively, you've been heavy run versus pass. Against this may be the most athletic defense you face this year. Can you hang your hat solely on the ground game tonight? Well, uh, we'll find out about running the ball. We'll certainly run it at him, but we'll we'll try to mix in throws. We'll try to be a little bit diversified. Hopefully, we can mix things up enough uh, to move the ball, get some scores on the board. I know Jamal Lord has worked hard in the passing game. How far has he come along recently in the execution of the pass? You know, he's been throwing the ball well. Um, uh, you know, he's right now we're completing right at 60% of our throws. We haven't thrown it that much, but we are completing passes. He's had a great week of uh, of operating uh, our running game and throwing the ball, so we're, we're counting on a great game from him. Coach, it is great to have you back on ESPN. Thanks for your time. All right, thanks. Mike? All right, Jerry, let's talk about Jamal Lord. Kirk, what do you think of the senior quarterback? Well, I think the experience that he has, both the positive and the negative, it really helped polish him and develop him as a quarterback. To go back to last year against Penn State and Iowa State, the lowest point in his career, I think it's really helped helped his growth as a quarterback and maturity. And I think more importantly, it's it's shown that his players believe in him because he's been able to survive that. Now, athletically, he's as good a quarterback as you're going to find in a nation. Doc brought it up with Coach Solich. Can they get it done by just running the football? To me, tonight, for the first time all year, they're going to have to show the ability to throw the football against this defense. Maybe not, my friend. Maybe not. <laughs> you know, Nebraska scheme plan is simple. They line up, they just hit the other guy in the mouth and keep hitting him in the mouth until he quits. They test the manhood. Now, if Southern Mississippi He's got a chance at this ball game. Their middle linebacker, Rod Davis, has got to play well from the inside out and stop that fullback in the middle. Now, their defensive coordinator, Tyro Nix, is one of the best young coordinators in the country, and he told me he's got some new stuff for the Big Red early. You might as well. The old stuff doesn't stop him. Yeah, this is a very good defense. Yeah. Southern Miss's offense will be challenged as well. Mickey D'Angelo was their starting quarterback. He's out with a concussion for at least a month. Dustin Almond will get the start for Southern Miss tonight. He started before, but a little different pressure, Chris Fowler, as he takes on Nebraska. But the guy to your left has an opinion on tonight's game as we send it to you in the studio. Mike, thank you. They both have opinions. They, you know, Southern Miss's motto is you know, anyone, anywhere, anytime. They back it up. They schedule tough people. Jeff Bauer doesn't like that giant killer's label, but his team tonight is a home underdog against Nebraska, despite the Cornhuskers' road woes one and five a year ago. Solich says this is a test to see if his team took the lessons of last year to heart. Well, and I think, Chris, the test is Southern Miss's defense. I mean, here's a defense. They're young, but very aggressive. And what they like to do is to get in gaps and get up the field and cause havoc in the backfield. And so I think if you're a Nebraska fan early in this game, what you're going to see is you're going to see negative plays. I mean, you're going to see Josh Davis getting hit behind the line of scrimmage. But that aggressive defense can also work against you. I think the key to this game for Nebraska is, yes, Mark, in the passing game, Jamal Lord, <laughs> there are going to be opportunities, Mark, in the passing game to throw down the field. Guys like Matt Herrian, Ross Pilking to just love 
love saying that name. They're going to have to throw the football, not 30, 40 times, but 15 times efficiently and hit some big plays in the passing game. And if Nebraska has 15 attempts throwing the ball, that's huge for Nebraska. It is. They only yeah. average about eight a game. <laughs> but if you look at Southern Myth, it's their offense. And Marvin Young is the big play player on this offense. They're going to have to get the ball in his hands. He averages 18 yards per catch. But more importantly, the special teams are going to be important for Southern Mississippi. The punt returner, Marvin Young, he's averaging 18 yards per punt return. He leads the Conference USA. They have to get Nebraska in a position where they are behind in this football game by at least two scores. That will play in their hands because Nebraska will not have success throwing the ball. A non-offensive touchdown, wouldn't that be big for the Golden Eagles? They have exactly one touchdown drive this season, longer than 43 yards. It's going to be low scoring and, and, and tough, I think. That's, that's right up front. Yep. So the ex one of college football's all-time best. Only two schools have won more games. It's Nebraska, three of its five national titles in the last decade. They're trying to reclaim the glory in this season. And they started strong, the trademark ground game, trying to get out in big punches. And the black shirt defense is playing lights out again. But tonight, the first challenge away from Lincoln. In our 20th year of live college football, ESPN, welcome you to College Football Thursday at Hattiesburg, Mississippi, home of the University of Southern Mississippi. The Golden Eagles host as big a home game as they've ever had. Nebraska's in town. Mike Tirico, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreit, Dr. Jerry Punch on hand. The Nebraska Cornhuskers' first road test of this 2003 season, 59-year-old Frank Solich. Significant staff changes, new offense, new defense, but his alma mater is off to a perfect start. On the other side, 50-year-old Jeff Bauer also coaching at his alma mater, where he has spent over 25 years as a player, assistant, now head coach. He lost his starting quarterback last week, so sophomore Dustin Allman will be at the controls tonight. It is a pretty comfortable night weather-wise, a little bit more humid than I think the Nebraska folks had hoped for, but overall, very pleasant weather conditions. John Eubanks will be back deep for Southern Miss. The Golden Eagles won the toss and elected to receive here tonight. Sandro DeAngelis, who's just doing kickoff, sets to boot Never had a bigger game in this building. Glad you're with us, and off we go on College Football Thursday. Poor kickoff by DeAngelis. Lucky that it doesn't go out of bounds. It's a touchback. Southern Miss will take over at its own 20. So in for the injured Mickey D'Angelo, Dustin Amon, a sophomore slinger. Fourth career start. It's a guy who has to carry the weight of being a starter here tonight, Kirk. He's done it before. How do you think he's set to do it this evening? Well, as you mentioned, Dustin is used to the pressure. Last year, he started three games filling in for D'Angelo. What they lose in decision-making from D'Angelo, they gain in playmaking ability tonight from Dustin Allman. He's not afraid to take chances. Sometimes for the coaches, maybe a little bit too many times he'll take those chances, but he's not afraid to take a few shots deep down the field. Opening drive starts from the 20. Tim Blackwell's the running back. He gets about five yards, close to the 25. Brian Bingham, the senior up front, made the tackle. But Blackwell's going to do a lot of handling the ball. He won back the starting job, Lee, that he had a couple of years ago. Number 23, Tim Blackwell, has overcome adversity to be here tonight. He left school, came back as a walk-on, and he's paying his way to play tonight. What a great story he is. Broden, a good tight end. Marvin Young, a walk-on, has become their best deep threat. But Blackwell has been the man to take over the job. And he will be busy tonight. After a pickup of four, his second carry will gain nothing. Barrett Rude leads the black shirt. A penalty marker comes in late on the play. Perhaps Nebraska too over aggressive. Big 12 officials here tonight. And a five yard face mask. We'll get Southern Miss within a yard of the first down. We saw Southern Miss a couple of weeks ago on College Football Thursday against UAB. They've had two changes up front to the offensive line. Chris White, the left guard, is new. George Batiste, the right guard, is in because of injury. Jim Hicks, the man in the middle, has to control things, and he's going to have to be busy tonight because Nebraska is not dominant up front, but they're pretty strong. Rip Shearer used to be the head coach at Memphis is in his first year as the Southern Miss offensive coordinator. And this is also an offense that's a work in progress. 
The down stays the same. It's second and one. And now it's third and one as Blackwell's pulled down by Demario Williams, who's been nothing short of fabulous in the first three Husker games. The interesting thing to me is that Southern Mississippi won the toss and decided to play offense. Kirk, that I, rarely happens, doesn't it? Well, it rarely happens, and especially in a game yeah. where two defenses dominate for yeah. both teams. You would expect a, a defer. Interesting, though, to, yeah, to take the ball here, see if they can get a first down. The hardest defense to move the ball on yeah. in this early season. 208 yards per game. D'Angelo mishandled the snap. Even if he recovers, he's shy of the first down. But more importantly, is it a turnover? Is it Nebraska ball? Or did D'Angelo get it back? Or rather, Almond. The Huskers say they have it, and they do. So third and one, Almond try to come away with it. But Ryan Bingham, the nose tackle, comes up with a recovery and gives the Huskers a short field. Again, let's repeat what Kirk and I was just talking about. Basic principles say you do not start on offense when you're playing against one of the best defensive teams in the nation. Here's a fumble and a turnover, Kirk. Sometimes, look at the center. Anytime it's third and one, the center's trying to step to his left and reach block. And when you do that, Jim Hicks had a tendency to pull away from the quarterback. And Dustin Allman needs to ride him a little bit longer to get a hold of that football. This is exactly what Southern Miss did not need and what Nebraska did. On the road for the first time, crowd in the game. This is what Nebraska needs, an opportunity like this. After the work, up front, in the middle, from the Nebraska defense, Trevor Johnson. In there, as well as Bingham, on the recovery. Please add 10 seconds for the game clock. So Jamal Lord and Nebraska will take over at the 30. Now, this is an offense that has struggled to move the ball in the air. It's been nothing but great. Moving the ball on offense, and Kirk, it's a quarterback who's handled so much pressure during his couple of years as a starter at Nebraska. It was interesting talking to Jamal Lord this week. We talked to him, what was the lowest point last year? And he said, you know, probably after the Penn State game or maybe even the Iowa State game, he survived it. He's still under center for this team. He's still the leader, and I think because of what he's been able to survive, the adversity, his players believe in him even more this year than they ever have. First down handoff, Josh Davis. This is a great Southern Miss defense as well. Great tradition. Rod Davis, who Lee mentioned at the beginning of the game, the stop after a pickup of about three. Josh Davis and Judd Davies in the backfield. Josh Davis, his dad played and was a great running back at Nebraska. This guy uh, is pretty open and eye-opening as well, Lee. Well, number one, Josh Davis' dad did play. His nickname was Tough Tony. He played against me. He was tough, so was Josh, but Josh is a little quicker and faster. Team Judd Davies in the backfield. Josh on the toss. Has some blockers. First down and more inside the 15 for the Huskers. Josh Davis won this job during summer camp. And he has kept it with some terrific play over the first couple of games and runs behind a good offensive line as well. They throw a flag after the push out of bounds. That ball, personal foul, against the defense, a hit out of bounds. They have the distance at the goal, first down. It's on Corey Yates, 60 year senior cornerback. So Nebraska will get even closer behind uh, a Nebraska offensive line that's not as dominant, star-studded as the past. Richie Incognito, a sophomore, his motor always goes to the point that Incognito had to go to anger management class during the offseason with Erickson, Sewell, Anderson, and Billy Waldrop up front. Incognito has been very good thus far this season. First and goal, Josh Davis. Antoine Cash takes him down. Gain of maybe two. Second and goal coming up. The red zone is an area that Nebraska has struggled with in recent games. It's an area that Frank Solich and Bar Barney Cotton both talked to us about, an area they need to improve. They've had eight field goals in the last two games by their freshman kicker. They've got to execute better inside this area. And we'll find out if they've made the adjustments right now against the Southern Miss defense. Only one right wide receiver in Liley. 
They adjust the play, but the play clock's at three. Lord gets the playoff. It's option. It's Lord. It's touchdown, Nebraska. So the play adjustment by Lord checked them into the correct one. And Jamal runs in his third touchdown of the season. The two big plays by Nebraska. Interesting. We thought they'd run right at Southern Miss. They're seeing all those defenders inside that box area. They're using their speed to get to the outside. David Dyke's extra point is good. And the Huskers lead 7-0. Quite a start for Nebraska off the Southern Miss turnover with a short field. They pound him on the ground and make him pay. After the turnover of the first drive, Dustin Almond back on the field after this. Later. Students have been here for two hours. Great crowd. Biggest home game is, uh, they've had here at Southern Miss. Not the way you want to start. Fumble it on third and short. Nebraska pounds it in for six. Not the way you want to start. Jamal Lord with an audible. He sees man coverage. He goes back to the option, back to the boundary. Picks up some blocks, shows his athletic ability, but the experience of Jamal Lord led to that touchdown. And our, our guy, Rod Davis, number 24, was in perfect position to make that play. But when you show you the replay after, you'll see a great block by Judd Davis who knocked him down. Jeff Bauer has been uh, very upset throughout the timeout, and Jerry Punch told us on the sideline, the quarterback, Dustin Amon, thought that he had the ball and thought the referee said he was clean with the ball. And at the bottom of the pile, the Huskers pulled it away. Here's John Eubanks with a nice kick return across the 30 and to the 32-yard line. Lee, tell us about that block you saw. Okay, Rod Davis, number 24, the great inside linebacker, will shuffle from the inside out, perfect position, except... Judd Davies gets a chip on him right there. And remember, Lord is 220 pounds. So if you don't hit him with everything, Kirk, you're not going to knock him down. Nice job by Davies. Just to get enough of a, sh just yep, a little just bit a of the shoulder, chip, just to chip. slow down Rod Davies, who, who has had the angle to make the play. Yeah, we're always looking for that pancake block. Yeah, knock the guy in his tail. <laughs> chip. Just what you need. So let's watch Southern Miss starting from its own 31. And Almond's first throw is incomplete. He was looking for... Antoine Currington, and the sophomore couldn't hang on. Dustin Allman has not had a very good season throwing the ball in the first couple of games, and the Nebraska defensive line will be looking to shut down the run because of that here tonight. Allman, being the sophomore, being the less experienced quarterback, not the better thrower of the two, Nebraska knows that Southern Miss is going to try to pound the ball on the ground. And they're ready for it. Demario Williams having a fabulous season. Came up from his linebacker spot. Made the play. Third and long coming up. Williams able to make so many plays because these guys aren't necessarily getting a bunch of sacks. But they're freeing up the linebackers. Trevor Johnson is a senior. Voted the captain. Bernard Thomas said, hey, I'm, I'm going to come out and set the sack record this year for the team. Well, he has none so far, but that's okay right now with Bo Pelini, who was an assistant coach with the Green Bay Packers, part of his nine years in the NFL. He has come here and restored the tradition of the black shirt defense, in large part because of running linebackers, like number seven, Williams, who's lined up as a down lineman. But his own blitz look as he drops back. Allman takes off and will get nowhere near the first down. Stuck by the man I was just talking about, Demario Williams. So they will punt the ball, and that has been a problem for Southern Miss. They've had three kicks blocked this year, and I want to introduce you to Stephen Daigle. This is his first time oh, snapping God. in college Ooh. football. He came out, take a deep breath, walked onto the team after the first set of walk-ons came when school started. So what happened to the cheerleader? I thought last time we did it. That snap was way to the left, and that's why this kick's bad. You're going to look at that and say, boy, the punter hit it off the yeah. side of his foot. Luke Johnson, a terrible kick. He had to take a step and a half left to come catch it. And it will be marked on the Southern Miss side of the field at the 47-yard line. Let me give you Jeff Bauer's worst nightmare, which woke him up last night. Quarterback thumbs the ball, give the Nebraska the ball on the 30. You punt the ball, give it to him on the inside the 50. Yo, 
big time trouble with the ball control football team getting the ball in great field position. And they've never had problems with special teams in terms of just getting the snap yeah. back, but they didn't have a long snapper. Kirk mentioned that guy right there, Andy Kelly, who came back and snapped the ball for them, Adam Kelly, I should say, who snapped the ball for them the first few games. He was a cheerleader at Southern Miss last year, didn't do the job after the block, so they went to Daigle, and his first snap was not good. First down throw by Lord. It's complete to Ross Pilkington, who takes it across the 40 and to the 38-yard line. So Southern Miss's defense is now going to be on the ropes here a little bit, guys. After seeing Nebraska run the first six plays, a throw there. Terrence Ford, the nose tackle, and Eric Scott, defensive tackle, have started all year. But the two ends, Lockett and Pierce, weren't expecting to be starters this year. Lee, Ronald Jones, a guy who we've seen a lot of for Tyrone Nix, the defensive coordinator, benched to start this game tonight. Terrell Paul, their best defensive lineman, will play as matter of fact, he's on the field right now, number 91. He's been injured the last couple of games. Davis on the move, all the way into the secondary, into the 15-yard line. Josh Davis, the senior out of Colorado, gets into the gut of this Southern Miss D. 23 yards. Uh, when you when you go up against this team, Nebraska, you better be ready if you're a perimeter player to deal with great blocking from the wide receivers. And this time, Rod Davis got a feel for what to expect. Watch this block. Boom. Just enough. That's a wide receiver taking down an All-American linebacker to open up a running lane for Josh Davis. Option look, and Lord is pulled down by Eric Scott. Those consistent guys I was talking about there on the lineup. Boy, they need him to play big tonight. They lost about three yards. We've mentioned Rod Davis a few times. Michael Boley Lee is also a linebacker that they love here in Hattiesburg. 27, Michael Boley was an excellent high school All-American, running back, wide receiver, and linebacker, great athlete. I tell you what, he's been one of the biggest surprises of the whole entire football team Boley has. Etrick Pruitt is the best defensive back to free safety, but Yates and Brooks, the two corners, as Kirk has showed you already, need to be very active defensively this evening. And Boley has to help Davis in the middle for Southern Miss tonight. Nebraska had to take a timeout. Play clock was running down. We'll have second and about 14 for the Huskers. We'll lead by seven. Second time in the red zone for Nebraska here in the first half of the first quarter. And the Huskers trying to make it 14-0 here on the road after opening with three victories in Lincoln. After the Nebraska timeout, we'll have second down and long for the Huskers. Lord rolling to throw, has two receivers down there. And that one is not even close. The pressure came from Eric Scott, and there really was nowhere for Lord to throw it. Good coverage downfield by Greg Brooks and company. The season starting well in Lincoln with the victory over Oklahoma State, and then Utah State comfortably, and a game against Penn State when Nebraska threw it six times. The whole game, once in the second half. Southern Miss went out to Berkeley and was destroyed by Cal. Bounced back with an ESPN2 college football Thursday win over UAB and beat Memphis, a high-scoring team, held them to no touchdowns and just six points. Third and 13, Lyle the receiver in motion. Markers down, this is a dead play. Penalty flags on the field. Looks like we'll have third and 18 coming up. Final snap, ball start, and the offense. Five yards coming to the field, by the way. Bizarre when Nebraska has the ball these days, guys, because Frank Solich yeah. can do this. He can yell at the officials. He can get on them because he's not calling plays this year the way he has every other time. He's been the, every other year he's been the head coach here. And he told us it really gets a little hairy, doesn't it? <laughs> he told us last night, I really want to go over and tell Barney Cotton what to do, but he does it, does he? Yeah, he holds back. He holds back. Comes the coach to make all the calls. We'll give him a few, a few pointers here. They're a big play. Four receivers, five in the pattern. They try the screen for Davis. Incomplete. Good pressure up front, and we're seeing already some of the new Nebraska offensive look that fans in Lincoln have been dying to see. We saw there four wides out of the gun with one back. 
From here, a field goal will be 40 yards, and they'll bring on David Dykes, true freshman, who, as Lee mentioned, has been outstanding thus far, kicking eight field goals. Eight for eight, isn't it? Eight for nine. How about nine for ten? How about... Good. What a kicker. True freshman who has won the job and has performed quite well. Connects from 40, and the Huskers go up 10-0. So they've made both Southern Miss mistakes turn into points for Big Red. Well, Lee, coming into tonight, just give me a sense of your Under Armour advantage on each, each side. Well, the first thing is Nebraska's number one in the nation controlling the football. Yo, and... Southern Mississippi gives them the ball. I don't understand that. Southern Miss on the other side, boy, they got an aggressive defense. They take the ball away from the opponents 11 times in three ball games. That's the advantage. I would have said this before, and I'm not second guessing. I would have rather started with my aggressive defense if I was Southern Mississippi against well, the best defense in the world, practically. Ah. All I know is they've had two possessions, and the ball has not gotten across midfield. Even a punch. A, hello. Well, you're right. I mean, it's easy to sit here and second guess. No, second guess. When, when we were standing here during the commercial break and we saw the coin toss, we were all looking at each other surprised. Southern Miss won the toss, elected to yeah. take the ball. You don't think they made a mistake, do you? The players? <laughs> the penalty marker is down on this kickoff. Nebraska was offside. So this is going to be a re-kick back from the 30. <clears throat> the back judge who lines up right down the 35-yard line through the hanky. Or illegal procedure. Maybe they have 12 guys on the field. Pony encroachment. Yeah. Still offside. You're over the 35 before he kicks it. That is technically the correct call. We'll, we'll have a chance as they set up for the next kickoff. To remind you about our college football slate on Saturday. College game days in West Point. Then after that, at noon Eastern, Minnesota, off to a very good start, takes on Joe Paterno of the Penn State Nittany Lions. Golden Gophers undefeated and in prime time. Lou Holtz leads South Carolina into Knoxville to take on number eight, Tennessee. That game is also available on ESPN HD. That's your college football Saturday on ESPN. And you mentioned that Kirk and I and Chris Fowler are going to be at West Point. What a great thrill oh, that's going to be. Saturday, wow. Look forward to watching it at 10.30 a.m. Eastern. Mikey Stadium on the banks of the Hudson. Beautiful setting. Sandro DeAngelis kicks from five yards deeper. It is taken by Falk, and he spins down to the 20 yard line. So Garth Glissman, one of the two 17s on the roster, is the backup quarterback, but Matt Brungart, the other 17, makes the play. There you see Dustin Allman trying to lead the troops out. He'll have a new tailback for this set. James Wally and Kirk, they have struggled mightily to put points on the board, no matter who the quarterback's been. Well, I think this is going to be a case where they've got to take some chances here. They're not winning the battle up front. thing about Bo, Bo, Bo Pelini and the Nebraska scheme is they don't give you very many opportunities to get behind them because they play so much zone. Allman will throw, try to test the secondary. It's deflected in the air and intercepted by Josh Bullock's. Who's got some blockers? Bullocks works the sideline well. He's inside the 10. First and goal, Nebraska. The deflection by Fabian Washington. A 41-yard return by the sophomore Josh Bullock. First down, go to go. This is a completely different Nebraska defense with the new scheme that they have. They're sitting back, they they really play a lot of zone. Fabian Washington breaks on the ball. Bullocks is right there, opportunistic. 12th turnover of the year for the Black Shirts. And as I said, this is a defense that last year played nothing but man-to-man. -man. With Bo Pelini's scheme now, they're playing a lot more, a lot more zone and a lot of different looks from that defense. And that's the perfect play. Washington Bullocks, they practice that every day, the old tip drill. It happens all the time. David Horn's the eye back, first and goal. It is Horn. His uh, pulling right guard, Jake Anderson, got in his way. We'll have second and goal coming up. 
disastrous start for Jeff Bowers' team. If you, if you ever want a textbook way to kill the will, you're a heavy favorite on the road, crowds in the game. How about 17 in the first half of the first quarter? If they punch it in here, that, that, well, that really hurts the, the atmosphere of the stadium, the, the will, everything. There's no reason they won't punch it in here because they're much right stronger there. up front. Yeah. Gonna throw it here. Lord rolls. He might keep it and run. He threw it out of the back of the end zone. The Southern Miss sideline is furious. Their coach wanted a block in the back. Third down coming up. Well, that's one of those alumni plays that I certainly don't agree with. Barry Cotton, the offensive coordinator. You got one of the world's greatest offensive lines. You're on the two-yard line. You've got second down, and you get fancy. Yo, i tell you one thing. If old Tom Osborne was calling the plays and old Frank Kohler so was well, calling the plays, they'd have run right at him. Well, they've had a lot of success here in the early going with getting it to the outside. Yeah. Yeah. The quarterback was, or Josh Davis using the speed to the outside because Southern Miss has so many people crowded in the middle. Down the line comes Lord. He pitches to Horn. Snows the pylon and dives in. Touchdown, Nebraska. Touchdown, Nebraska. Well, Kirk just said they were doing a great job with the option, and he was right, absolutely. All I said, Kirk, and you can take this replay because you call it, but I guarantee you that second play was a lousy call throwing the ball on the three-yard line with Nebraska against Southern Miss. Take it right there. to the point now, working, oh. on, working on a few kinks, working on the passing game. They knew they could go back to old reliable here on third down. Horn did a nice job there of buying his time and finding the hole and taking it to the pylon for the touchdown. Extra point by Dykes is good. Nebraska gets the ball the first three times at the Southern Miss 29, the Southern Miss 47, and the Southern Miss 4. 17-0. That's worth the yo. <laughs> Little woodshed opening quarter here, huh? Yep. Nebraska 17, Southern Miss nothing. And every time Southern Miss has hiccuped, Nebraska's made them pay. We had the fumble on third and one. Touchdown. Poor snap leads to a shank punt. Touchdown. Or field goal. Field goal. And then the interception leads to the touchdown. He got up in there. We got I have to say there's 17 points have been scored, and we haven't had a snap on the Nebraska side of the 50. Not a snap. And Nebraska has, what, 56 yards of total offense, yeah. and they have 17 points. I'll be anxious to see if Nebraska can take the ball and, and the Southern Miss territory and move it down, because yeah, we haven't seen exciting. that. It'd be that's nice exciting. to watch that. Yeah. Maybe take a little longer, give us a chance to eat a sandwich or something while they're moving the ball down the field. That's a nice sandwich you're sitting up here, don't no, they? Yeah. They look good. Yeah, they're looking real good. Back from the goal line, the return. More fault from opening. Across the 30. Down at the 35-yard line. Ball came free, but the man was down already. So a nice kick return there. And Southern Miss will have decent field position. The back seven on these Bud Light starting laps for Nebraska features what I think is the strength of this defense with DeMario Williams. What Bo Pelini, the defensive coordinator, is doing with him has freed him up to make so many plays. In the back, the secondary. Fabian Washington is on one corner. Pat Ricketts is a guy who took his black shirt that you get when you're a Nebraska starter. They framed it last year. He's back and earned another starting job this year. And has played pretty well on the corner. And it's first and 15 after this flag. Still first down. Brad Bowers running into a tough team, but the guy who's caused some of the angst. Bo Pelini on the other side, the Nebraska defensive coordinator. Could run for mayor in Lincoln right now. He sure could. His defense is off to a good start tonight. Nebraska coaches will tell you they don't have a superstar on this defense. The closest thing they have to it is Demario Williams, the outside linebacker who is all over the field. And Southern Miss is shell-shocked right here. On the offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. They can't keep the ball, they can't snap the ball, they can't do anything right now. I think the black shirts are licking their chops right about now. <laughs> I think it's official. I think we're allowed to call them the black shirts this year. 
We'll see. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Early, it's early, yeah, sweetheart. It's too early, sweetheart. Early, sweetheart. They have a, They still got Troy State, Missouri. Yeah. Tough this summer. Southern Miss is not an offensive juggernaut. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you on that. First and twenty, and Almon takes off, gets some yardage back, about eight or nine, out to the thirty-two. Jerry has the sophomore quarterback been doing when he comes over to the sideline. Well, Mike, they've been trying to talk to Dustin Allman to get him to calm down and relax, and he's just very, very intense. He missed a couple of checks in the opening possession, and then after the interception on the previous possession, he just walked to the corner of the bench area and stood all along with his head down, and his head just moving back and forth, shaking his head, no, no, no. You've got to believe his confidence is just absolutely sagging right now. Jeff Bowers, regular starter, Mickey D'Angelo, in the ball cap, out for at least a couple of weeks, probably a month or more with concussion problems. This is second down and incomplete for the wide receiver, Deron Lawrence. Oh, Mickey D'Angelo wasn't lighting the world afire with his performance, 60% completions. He threw a touchdown, three interceptions, mostly in the Cal game. But he's been taking a beating over the last couple of years and against a Memphis team that always plays a physical game against Southern Miss. This hit kind of started it in the first half. And then Mickey D'Angelo in a second quarter, much of which he cannot remember, took a couple of more shots and was unable to return in the second half. Went to the hospital for a CAT scan, came back to watch the fourth quarter, but is out for a while. Pressure and a sack on third and long from Demario Williams, his fourth on the season. He had three against Utah State, adds another one here. And Southern Miss has to kick it. Demario Williams, when it's third and long, they give him the opportunity to put his hand down and just go right through Neil Meade. And that, it wasn't anything fancy there. He has quickness. He's got his power. And that time, he just went right by Neil Meade, who needs some help there. Check the snap from Daigle. That snap was good. Kick is away from Luke Johnson. Doesn't go very far. But gets a seven miss roll and will be taken out at the 30 the best play Southern Miss has had all night. 42-yard punt. Nebraska's going to snap it from its own side here. Better snap by Daigle. Understandably tight in the opener. Well, speaking of tight, things were tight in the wild card race in the NL. Florida's put an end to most of that. Philadelphia might be alive, depending on what happens tonight, when we pick up the hunt for October tomorrow night in Philadelphia against the Braves at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on ESPN. Atlanta still playing for the best record in the National League, battling against San Francisco. And remember the divisional playoffs start Tuesday at 1 Eastern here on ESPN. Lord, a first down throw. It's complete. Comes down to David Horn, the running back. Took it out to the 35. Gain of five, second and five coming up. That's the number nine, David Horn. Billy Kleckler, one of the backup linebackers in there. Wouldn't be surprised at all here to see Nebraska, now that they've got a little bit of field to work with, take a few chances and show people that they can throw the football. I know they don't need to, but I'm just saying to show people, let people know it's in their arsenal, and that they can get the ball down the field somewhere in this series, see if they want to try to get it downfield. There's a play pass. They're looking for Isaiah Fluellen. And it's incomplete. Fluellen, a redshirt freshman, born in Germany at an Air Force base, Ramstein, the large Air Force base there military parents and his background they've moved around uh, he's a guy who's emerged for this team in the last two weeks his dad was a chaplain in the air force mm -hmm. that's why he was over there so a third down coming up we had six nebraska passes out of their first 14 plays here tonight look at this 39 <laughs> passes in their first three games 56 times this year one quarterback has thrown it 40 or more times in a game Gives you an idea how Neanderthal the pass offense has been so far, but it's a work in progress, and we're seeing more of it tonight. And Lord is brought down by Michael Boley on third down. So they go exclusively the pass there and get their first three and out of the night. Mm. Michael Boley, as I said before, he was a linebacker, wide receiver, and a running back in high school. 6'3", 218 with great speed. And I tell you what, I think of all the linebackers on the field, this guy is the most underrated, Michael Boley. The call there by Tyrell Nix to bring the pressure there and try to get after Jamal Lord. He came free, got right by the guard and tried to clip it. Kyle Larson is kicking. 
been terrific over his Nebraska career. Marvin Young took one back 87 yards last week against Memphis. Too much time. Or did they get the timeout first? On the edge, Jarrell Pippins was trying to get a timeout recognized by the line judge, David Oliver, and he did. Husker timeout will come back with a punt in a moment, and we'll dip into the Thursday night mailbag. We are back, and they back Nebraska up five after consultation. The other referees overrule the line judge. Delay of game before the timeout. Great kick that is not caught by Young and pushes Nebraska back to the 10. Fabulous kick of 63 yards. Terrific job by Kyle Larson, the senior. I don't think everybody believed in Nebraska just yet. And still three minutes left yeah. in the first quarter. But they look like the old Nebraska compared to the 7-7 seven and seven we saw last year. I, I recommend if anybody wins a toss against Nebraska, don't go on offense, please. Yeah. Because I think that really set the tone for Jeff Barr's team to go underneath well this defense in nebraska seeing oh. the first and they're, they're playing with so much confidence yeah. i think that's the thing that stands out they expect to make plays and here in the early going oh, they've made two big good. plays to give their offense the the football in great field position and it completely rattled this southern miss offense the quarterback almond is pressured high and incomplete to the wide open tight end Broden. but pretty hard to sit in there and make a nice toss with the strong safeties got you all lined up philip bland and Philip Bland is an interesting down. story. His dad plays strong safety for Colorado. He's got a 3.8 in business. Brilliant football player and student. I don't think Dustin Allman is seeing any of these blitzes that uh, Nebraska's coming with. Each time the blitz has been there, it's caused havoc for Southern Miss's offense. I don't think he's seeing it. Kenneth Johnson, the third receiver, comes in the game. Allman on the pitch. Across the 20 to the 21 yard line for Tim Blackwell. And that's a first down for the Golden Eagles. So the three wides, they got the nickel back in there and were able to run it. Sometimes when you get a defense that is just overflowing, flying to the football, it's good to go with misdirection and maybe a reverse, a, a, a counter, a bootleg. And this time out of the shotgun, this is essentially a naked. He came right off of the fake. Look at all of the space there for him to go. I mean, I was surprised he pitched that. He had a man downfield blocking. If he could take that defender and then deal it out to Blackwell, Blackwell's still running. I think Rip Shear, the offensive coordinator, did a smart thing, man. As you said, i do it some misdirection. Yeah. Because I tell you what, by going back and setting this kid off, arming up, no way he's going to get that. But they can't protect against him. Mickey D'Angelo told me, the starting quarterback, when I asked him about Dustin, he said one of the things that you'll see is he's streaky. He could go maybe seven or eight passes where he just doesn't seem to feel it. Next thing you know, he could go with 15 straight. He needs to have something good happen to him to try to find that hot streak in him. Decided to pull this one down. That was a good decision. Ended up moving it out to about the 27-yard line. C.J. Hollowell, the other linebacker with Williams and Rude, who we've talked about already, helped make the play. It's Dustin Hoffman's also an interesting story. His dad, Mike, played for the Bills and the Steelers. Kid comes from good stock at 6'2", 12. As the coach says, he wings it a little bit too much, Kurt. Uh, he, likes to, he likes to take a few chances. So far, he hasn't had a yeah. chance to take too many chances. He's on his back. Like it's, weird, it's weird to see Nebraska playing zone defense. It's so used to seeing a play straight up man. Pick up a six, second and four. Picks off, incomplete. Antoine Currington could not pick it up. Patrick Cabongo got there with the pressure and maybe a hand to tip it away. Mm. It's a good thing he tipped it because that was a lateral. Almond 0 for 5. Here's Jerry. Guys, you talk about Allman being streaky. In practice on Tuesday, when they wanted to pump him up, they let him throw the long ball. He has great touch on the long ball, and that really seemed to ignite the young man. But unfortunately, they've been had such poor field position, they haven't been able to get the vertical game going and need better field position to get him pumped up. But he loves to throw the deep shot. Maybe better field position will give him a chance. 
Marvin Young would be the guy to try to stretch the field. He's at the top of the screen. Allman rolls that way, throws that way. It's deflected and incomplete. Fabian Washington in the coverage, and once again, his zone defense from Nebraska leaving nowhere to throw. Yeah, but let me say something about that Fabian Washington before I forget. He comes from the same hometown as Tommy Frazier. Frazier. Bradington, Florida. Kirk, that kid had Florida speed, didn't he? He, he oh, did have Florida speed. We asked him why he didn't stick around to Florida State or Florida yeah. or Miami. He said he was recruited by all of them, but he wanted to just get out of the state and get out on his own. He, you know what he's doing? He's doing a good job of reading Dustin Allman's eyes. That time, Dustin looked right at his intended receiver, Marvin Young, the entire time he was back there, and Washington jumped on him. Luke Johnson to punt. Snap good. Best kick. <laughs> Pushes Josh Davis back to the 24 and a return to the 29-yard line. So five of the return after a punt of 49. Patrick Pruitt, the starting safety, made the tackle. As promised, Thursday night mailbag time. Log on to ESPN.com. Ask your questions each and every Thursday. This one for you, Kirk, from John in Omaha. How much do you think opening up the passing game is going to help the Huskers down the road? Well, I think down the road will be the key when they play teams like Texas A&M, when they go to Austin to take on the Longhorns, Kansas State, Colorado, and it will help them. I mean, you can look at it right now. They have dominated teams by running the football wide throw, but later in the year, I thought maybe a little bit tonight, teams will challenge that running game, and they have to have that ability to make teams pay by being able to throw. Josh Davis, the lone back, one back, two tight ends, option with Davis. They force the quick pitch and push him out of bounds. Ronald Jones got off the end to force the quick pitch by Jamal Lord. Jones is a player who is one of the better physical specimens of this team, but he wasn't answering the bell every time it was rung, so they sat him down. He didn't start tonight, and let's see if that lights a fire under the senior out of golf course. He's also fighting a little bit of an ankle that, uh, that has slowed him down this week. But you're right. Jones is one of those guys, when he cranks his motor up, he's a very effective player on the outside. Second and 12, right back to the option. Well defended once again, Antoine Cash, the linebacker, got in there. And the Southern Miss defensive staff trying to fire up the players and keep this crowd in the game as we head to third down. Typical great defensive call by Tyrone Nix. If you watch Rod Davis, the secret to playing Nebraska, and I coached against him a lot of times, never beat him, but I know this. You gotta defend him from the inside out, make the quarterback catch the ball, and then you gotta come from the inside out with Rod Davis. He's a graduate student with a business degree, so he knows how to play football on the inside. That time he got around some of that traffic. Yeah. It's been slowing him down. That time he was able to get through it. This is where they want him, third and long. And the throw is a terrific catch by a great tight end, Matt Herrian, across the 40 and a first down at the 48-yard line. Here's all you need to know about Matt Herrian. He caught seven balls in 2002. Four of them were touchdowns. All the touchdowns were 33 yards or more. What does all that mean? He's a tight end who can stretch the field, and it makes Nebraska so much better. Well, this time it's a pretty simple route. They just needed time. You're going to have Herrian come down on a, just a simple drag right. You like the new stuff we got this week? He's oh, just gonna, good. How nice? come you get to use it? I you can use it, too. Right. It comes down on a drag route, and look at the catch. One hand oh. to get it up there, then the speed to get upfield to pick up the first down. That is not AARP approved, Lee. Okay. <laughs> Davis first down run. Oh. Oh, Kevin Coley, the sophomore of the tackle, and a silly flag comes in. You cannot afford to do that against Nebraska. And Greg Brooks took a swing. First a foul. Mm -hmm. this is He'd be, he'd be lucky not to get thrown out. Yep. Pretty, pretty deliberate swing. Right to the face. I think Jeff Bowers yelling to see if the first one was not caught. As often happens, you catch the second one. And it'll move Nebraska into Southern Miss territory yet again. And it's interesting to me that the first quarter isn't over yet. It seems like we've still been going over. on. It's just still going. We've been first? there a long time, and it's 45 seconds ago in the first quarter. Wow! Ah. And they've got 17 and driving. <laughs> hello. Yeah, I think that's definitely a hello. It's gonna be a good night pretty soon. Shotgun, first and ten. Huh? Quarterback draw with Lord runs right into Davis. 
And Rod Davis makes the play. And that should bring quarter number one to an end. Headlines. Southern Miss doesn't have its starting quarterback. They go to their backup. Southern Miss hasn't completed a pass. They've turned it over twice. Both turnovers turned into Nebraska touchdowns. And a bad snap turned into Husker points as well. Complete domination by Nebraska in the first 15 minutes. They're 3-0. They're ranked 11 in the country. Some people still ask questions about them. But there is still plenty of talent in the land of Lincoln. And when you put the ball in the hands of guys like Lord and Horn, they cash in. 17-0 Huskers after one. Quarter number two in Hattiesburg with Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreit, and Dr. Jerry Punch, Mike Tirico. Glad you joined us on College Football Thursday. Complete domination by Husker Nation in quarter one. Second and ten to start the second, and Jamal Lord drops back and throws. Big stick on the receiver, Pilkington, by Kevis Coley. So Bowley and Davis are the two linebackers we've talked about, but Kevis Coley's made a couple of big hits here on this drop. You know, interesting stat here. The Southern Mississippi defense has only allowed one three points in the first quarter of the entire season. And to me, why in the world would their coach put them on offense first? I know I'm belaboring that point, but I want somebody to ask Jeff Bauer why he made that decision. Somebody. Third and seven, again, the quarterback draw. And they will not get near the first down. Ball came out. And Nebraska got it back. Fourth down from here, 51-yard field goal. So the Huskers might think about going for this here because it's right in the gray area. The freshman kicker, Dykes, has only attempted one kick over 40. It was a 41-yarder he made against Penn State. Oh, that Kyle Larson is such a good punter. I, I punt it. And I tell you why I punted. Pin them down there. Yeah, pin them down there. Because yeah. if you pin them down, they're going to get a safety. With the way your defense that's, is playing. That's the only way they haven't scored yet. Well, they had a field goal, a touchdown next to point. Yeah. A safety would be nice. <laughs> it's like you're going for the cycle. In baseball, you're going for the triple. I'm telling you, that's I punted. The triple. Well, we'll start with a delay again. Five yard total is still fourth down. And five more yards for Dykes to kick. The way the defense is playing is... It's a great call, especially if you can get him inside that 10-yard line. Turn the defense loose on a quarterback, the young quarterback, and Dustin Allman, and it hasn't quite settled in yet. That's right. Kyle, Kyle Larson has, has kicked five inside the 20 this year. He's kicked five. Let's see if he can make it six. It was five of his first 10 to start the season. Had a very nice first punt here tonight. And they declined the penalty not to give him the five extra yards to pin Southern Miss back deep. And you can do that when it's fourth and seven. I don't no. think he's going to no. get to kill no. this one. No. No. Ah. Drive will start from the 20 for Southern Miss. Those of you just tuning in here on College Football Thursday, here is our ESPN game track. The opening quarter of Nebraska's defense didn't allow a complete pass and forced a couple of turnovers. That's the one they really forced. The deflected interception taken down by Josh Bullock that led to a touchdown for the Huskers. And they scored 14 points off the turnovers. One a Jamal Lord run. The second, the option to sophomore David Horn. And a poor snap on a punt by Southern Miss led to the field goal. Just 17-0 in Dustin Allman. Still looking for his first pass completion here on the night. First down run, Tim Blackwell. Just a couple of yards. The stout Nebraska defense, Brandon Teamer, a freshman defensive lineman, started that one. You know, when you're a, a quarterback that doesn't have a great deal of experience and you get off to such a slow start, you, you, even a screen pass, any, anything to try to get some confidence right now. I don't care if it's a three-step pitch, a quick out, a quick slant, anything he is most comfortable with, you have to try to give him a chance 
to hit a pass to try to get him going a little bit and get his confidence going. There you Pressure go. Up the corner. Oh. Daron Lawrence let it go right through his hands. Almost pass incomplete. Did it for Daron Lawrence. Well, there was the call. Well, you know what? That was a terrific read, Side too, Corey. Side adjust, yeah. You know, Fabian Washington, the short corner, came on a corner blitz, and, and Allman picked it up very nicely, except the guy didn't catch it. But that was a nice play, Kirk, on Allman's part to read that short corner blitz. Yeah, they were both on the same page there. That it's was good. Lawrence holding on to the football. They're in third and two with the worst-case scenario. Now it's, again, third and long. What are the odds of Nebraska blitzing off the top, off the slant, off the uh, top man right here? Here he comes. Allman steps and throws, almost oh, intercepted. T.J. Hollowell dropping back. They are 0 for 8, and they've got no clue offensively right now. Nothing. I want to say this because I coached against Nebraska before, and I've seen them a lot. This is the best-looking pass defense that I've seen Nebraska have in the last, oh, eight to ten years. Yeah, they look they look very good back there, Mike. They're just all on the same yeah, page. and good you know, reaction. The, the system is, Athletes. system is working. Luke Johnson to kick. <laughs> Not a great kick. 44 yards. Davis in the 34. Pulled down at the 43 return Davis of nine. Michael Bowley in on the tackle. 17 nothing Huskers. A good field position when you come back. Well, it's been an amazing run of quarterbacks at Nebraska, fitting the system so well. Tommy Frazier, and then after that, Scott Frost leading them to heroics. And Eric Crouch, who rounded out his career in downtown New York. It was a nice piece of hardware. The quarterback, Jamal Lord, had to follow was Frost. Now, Joe Daly comes in. The true freshman quarterback, who everyone in Lincoln has been begging to see. He played in the Utah State game in the second half. Now fumbles the first snap in and gets brought down by Ronald Jones. Joe Daly, a true freshman. Really, Tommy Frazier was the last true freshman to play significant time at quarterback. And when he came in against Utah State, he threw the ball so well. And had everybody excited. This is the guy who's a thrower first, then a runner. He's the best fit to run this offense. And Frank Solich told us yesterday, Jamal Lord's still the quarterback. We just have to get our number two quarterback ready. So, up 17-0, good field position. Here's a series for Daly. Toss to the eye back horn. And David takes it out right near midfield. You know, following the, the success that Crouch had in his last couple of years in Lincoln, it's so tough for Jamal Lord. And now he hears about this freshman daily, and it, it's a hard adjustment. But, Kirk, you've got to get your number two quarterback ready, so you have to play this guy some. If you're Jamal Lord, you look at this, and you're not intimidated. You're not threatened by this. He's, he's been through a lot worse than having some freshmen threaten him for playing time. He went to Happy Valley last year and got booed by some of his own fans when he got home. Iowa State, he got booed. Dealing with those kind of things and that kind of adversity really allows you to mature as an individual, allows you to mature as a quarterback. Third and four, daily option toss. Great catch by Horn. First down and more. Across the 35 into the 32-yard line. It's nice, too, when you have a talented player like that who can bail you out. Pickup of 19. And the one thing about that, Kirk and Mike, it was an automatic. If you notice, he backed away and put his hand on his uh, forearm, and that must have met the option play, and he ran a nice automatic. So, obviously, he knows what he's doing. And you saw Barney Cotton, the offensive player, nice. just looking good job. Good yeah, job. Good and job. at the same time, Daly, not to hold Daly back, Daly's going to be, Daly's the future in Lincoln. He is a great quarterback. When we talked to Barney Cotton, he said, we're looking for quarterbacks when we recruit them for the future who can throw the football first and also have the ability to run. They're not looking for just option quarterbacks yeah. who, oh, by the way, will teach to throw. They want throwers who can run, and they feel that Daly is that kind of quarterback. The handoff there, and as Horn was trying to get ahead of steam, it's almost as the feet were going too fast. He couldn't keep up with the rest of his body. We'll have and to follow, down to follow up a point with Kirk's mate, talking, talking about, also Barney Cotton saw this last night when he's looking for that quarterback. 
Kirk, and we both understand that, Mike, this will help us get skilled pass receivers, which they don't have. They don't have a lot of great skilled people on the outside, but if they start to throw the ball a little bit, Barney Cotton said, those skilled receivers will come. Well, if you play wide receiver and you want to yeah. catch the football, right now, you know, coming into this year, you weren't looking at Nebraska. Right. It's more of a physical blocking, uh, and I think where they're trying to grow is trying to get their quarterbacks to the point where they are a threat throwing. So you're right. Receivers do want to come and be a part of this system. You saw Frank Solich was trying to get timeout, but didn't get the timeout. It's delay again. So no timeout. The flag does stick here. Unless these guys want to meet and change their mind again after the call, like the Big 12 officials did last time. It'll be second down. Last thing about Jamal Lord, Mike, and, and Coach. In my opinion, I think you know, getting Daly in, letting the, the fans in, in Nebraska, putting the pressure on Jamal Lord, again, because of what he's been through, if you're Frank Solich and you're Barney Cotton and you're trying to win a Big 12 championship, do you want a veteran who's been around the block and experienced some things or a true freshman? You want the veteran in Jamal Lord. Second down. Here's a look at Daly in a throwing situation. On the run, incomplete for the tight end, Harry. Well covered across the field by the safety extra crew. Boy, that Hetrick crew at number 28 made a great play. He's a, he's one of the graduate students they have playing for him. He graduated in May in sports administration, a very intelligent guy. But the thing I liked about that, Kirk and Mike, is the way he extended himself and tapped it away without getting past in interference. Good closing speed there. Talking to some NFL personnel on the field before the game, they said there are a couple of these Southern Miss defenders that they're looking at, and Hetrick Pruitt is an NFL, has an NFL future. Third and 16, they need to get to the 21 for a first down. Daly, let it go high, on the deflection, intercepted by Corey Yates, who gets it to the 30-yard line. I know what everybody is saying. We want Lord. <laughs> Bring us Lord. Why would you take Jamal Lord out? Is he back I mean, in the sports bar? Yeah, back in the sports bar. Back in the sports bar. I don't know. That cop Hold don't you. know what he's doing. Hold, Hold you. I'll tell you why we got that guy. Fans are so fickle. Even at Nebraska, yeah. where they win almost all the time, they're fickle. Nothing can go right for Southern Miss. They get the ball. They get a turnover. Etrick Pruitt was hurt oh. on that play. The safety you guys were just talking about. Doc will work that on the sideline. Like you can see him holding his shoulder yep. in the play before, so it might be something that uh, is really bothering him. From the 30, Dustin Allman. And the Southern Miss offense. It's Whaley. The backup tailback now. Fighting hard for yards. He picks up eight out to the 38. Well, James Wally was the starter to start the season. Was replaced by Tim Blackwell. And when he gets his opportunity, he is also in that prove it mode and you saw a little bit of that second effort there as he picked up eight yards. Competition is phenomenal for a coach. You, you have a guy like Tim Blackwell who comes back and provides a little bit of spark, has the speed. Wally comes in of course and has the power but the two push one another to become better players. Southern Miss looking for its second first down. This is their furthest advance on the field all night. And they get it with Wally across the 40 to the 41. Hollowell made the tackle. Getting a little movement up there. A little push there for Southern Miss. What's that old hay in the barn cliche? Hey, nowhere near the barn yet. You know, you can score a touchdown and be within 10 before halftime. What are you looking at? Hello, don't you hate in the barn deal? <laughs> <laughs> Alvin. Mike, there's some more hay in the barn. <laughs> Lornell McPherson comes up with a big loss on the sack. Trevor Johnson with the pressure as well. Loss of 14. <laughs> oh, I don't think Southern Mississippi's never seen this kind of speed. You know how that's one of the things you know you work against these blitzes. You were talking about Kirk? Yeah. But your scout team doesn't run. No, not, not with this kind of speed. They, they, are, they simply are bringing it from every different yeah. direction. That time they, they came off the corner at the top of the field, and it puts a lot of pressure on this young quarterback. He's trying to get a feel for things. He can't get into a rhythm because they're disrupting the timing. 
so many like that. That. Williams came off the edge, screen to Blackwell. It seems like there are 18 Nebraska players there everywhere you look. And Dustin Allman took a shot there. His backup's a true freshman. Don't you think Damian Carter's heart is beating a little quicker right now? But Demario Williams, when they put him down in a pass rush situation, remember Terrell Farley yeah. years ago mm -hmm. in Nebraska when Nebraska early mid 90s winning some championships. He reminds me, his speed and his burst with that first step reminds me so much of Farley and his size, same dimensions. One thing about Williams, he's the first elected captain from junior college since 1957. They got great respect for that kid. Comes the blitz right here, coming again. And finally a whistle blows. Nebraska took a timeout. I think the fifth time Nebraska's called timeout this half. <laughs> They're out of them. Third and 13 coming up when you come back to the Rock. A lot of the questions people have had are the black shirts back in Nebraska's defense. Well, go ask Southern Miss. Look at the offensive chart so far. 22 snaps, 37 yards. In part has to do with a quarterback who's really not comfortable. But it has a lot to do with Nebraska bringing pressure from every corner of this city right now. Third and 14, need to get to midfield for the first down. Allman, runs complete to Deron Lawrence. Ball went through his hands before. He took it through the middle of the zone for a first down at the 39. Check it, they're going to move it back down to the 42. It's a big throw for Dustin Allman there. Third down and long. Stepped up into the pocket there to get away from the pressure from the Mario Williams and put a strike right where it had to be. And Lawrence held onto the football for the first. Found that pocket in that zone defense. First snap in Nebraska territory tonight. Play pass. Flush. Incomplete. That time, Daniel, Daniel Bullocks brought the pressure. He is the twin brother of Josh. And Kirk Bocalini is getting so many people involved in this scheme. You talked about how he could run for mayor in Lincoln. And it's because the black shirts last year had a tough year. Bo Pelini came in. He spent nine years in the NFL. He talks about Pete Carroll as somebody that really helped him. George Seifert in his days with the 49ers as an assistant coach. He was with the Packers last year. You can see the effect that he's had on this defense and the new scheme that they're running now in Nebraska. Wally with the carry across midfield. Well, third down coming up, Lee. I think it starts even further than that when the guy played for Don Bucci at Cardinal Mooney in Youngstown, Ohio. Don Bucci is a legend in high school football coaches in Ohio. The Stoops brothers are from that area. That's why I think, and right now, I know it's early, but they give an award for the Frank Rawls assistant coach of the year. Right now, if I had a vote, oh, I'd vote for him because well, that's the biggest difference in Nebraska I've ever seen playing defense the way they are now. It's night and day, and to oh. see the system, the way Look it's it. working, it, it's interesting. You bring up Mike and Bobby and Mark Stoops. These guys all went to high school together. Third and eight. Just shy of the front row. <laughs> Incomplete. <laughs> There's a mentality up there, and that, that Youngstown area is a very, very hard-nosed, blue-collar area. Tough, tough guys. Tough. They the valley. The tough guys. They call it the valley, right? The valley, boy. They got it. And I'll tell you what, that Don Bucci, I went there to see him in the early 60s to recruit players. He's now the athletic director at Carter Mooney. He produced some great football players, but most important, Kurt, great people. Great Cardinal people, Mooney High School. Great people, and if you look at the characteristics of the way, the coaching style of the Stoops brothers and what you see from Bo Pelini, it's the same thing you're talking about, an aggressive nature, in your face, dictating tempo on the defensive side of the ball. Touchback on the Luke Johnson kick. He's okay with all of us. He played with Kirk at Ohio State. Right. He's a Paisan. He's okay with That's you. Right. December 13th, he and same I share day. a birthday. No and way. And Mike that? Stoops, too. I could not believe that. He's coaching here you. at any level. Give it to him right now. You know, people always ask, what's the best part of your job? I said, it's working with Kirk and Lee. Why? Well, look. I love this. Kirk, Kirk is screaming at the truck. Producer and director Tom Archer and Mike Schwab. Get us this shot. I love Little Red. Yeah. Hey, Fowler's back there in Bristol watching. He knows what I'm talking about. Oh, Little Red's the best. He'll do some crazy moves. Oh, yeah. You ever try to push him over? Oh, you, yeah. can't. I know. you can't. I know. I try to push him I over in the him. blink, and you can't push him over. He just kind of bounces around. You people have problems. <laughs> Jamal Lord is back in at quarterback. 
After the series with the interception for Joe Daly, Lord keeping on the option, 5 to the 25. Greg Brooks, the corner, came up and made the play. Making your weekend plans? College game day, 10.30 a.m. Eastern. That's the way every Saturday starts. The guys will be at West Point. And then at noon, our Big Ten kick will be the undefeated number 20, Holding Gould versus Minnesota. Taking on Chopa and the Nittany Lions of Penn State in Happy Valley. Then the primetime game, 7.45 Eastern. Blue Holtz in South Carolina take on number 8, Tennessee. Call your local cable operator or direct TV because... That nighttime game can be seen on ESPN HD. That's now available nationwide. Two and five, the down and distance. A couple of yards for Davis as he is stuck. By Corey Yates. By the way, last series, I told you Etrick Pruitt came off the field holding yeah. his shoulder. Jerry Punch tells us Pruitt is okay. And is back on the field here in this year. Third and a couple coming up, and to their credit, their team has done nothing offensively. But the fans have stayed behind their Southern Mississippi team here. Pass to Davis. Can't get there. Well strung out. And once again, we call Michael Boley's name. He and Rod Davis. The two backers make the play. And with four minutes left, Southern Miss is going to take a timeout. Time out of the field. Timeout. Southern Miss. So Southern Miss will stop it, trying to maximize the time they have with the ball here. At the end of the first half, trailing Nebraska by 17. It was shades of doing a Duke game at Cameron Indoor Stadium here. We're here. Oh, so three hours before the old Lee and I were here three hours before. Kirk got here a little bit later. And the student section was here from the second the doors opened, slapping those thunder sticks, cheering, chanting. They have been so into the game. They've waited for this game uh, for a couple of years. If they've been here, or if they're not freshmen, have been here for a while. And they've been wonderful here thus far, even though their team has 26 plays and 60 yards against the Black Shirt defense. Here is the punt. It's away. Marvin Young set to take it. Tried to get the corner. He does. Has a lot of blockers. Young up the field. To the 21. So Marvin Young, who changes games, once a game for Southern Miss with big plays, had a punt return for a touchdown last week against Memphis. Here puts... Southern Miss in his best field position of the night. Well, the key here in this return is right there, trying to outrun that first guy down, and now he's got the wall. Now he has a convoy of blockers. Very surprising he didn't pick up one more block. Get your head on a swivel a little bit, you pick up a man, and he's into the end zone. Now we'll see what now the Nebraska see what defense let's made see. up. Now we'll see. Net of minus four on the punt. Oh, Almond oh, trying oh, to turn it up. His white shirts and red pants surrounding him. Lucky to get a few yards out of that. To the 20. Dr. Jerry Punch. Guys, Dustin Allman said he grew up going hunting and fishing on Saturday with his dad, so most of the football he watched was NFL on Sunday, so he's tried to mold his game after players in the NFL he watched back then, and now he says he really likes the footwork of Peyton Manning. He, he admires the toughness and arm strength of a Brett Favre, and he really appreciates the field generalship and leadership of a Troy Aikman. It's those three guys he tries to draw from as he wants to improve his game here as a quarterback at Southern Miss. Well, he watched them. This is time to punch one in. Give it to your back. Blackwell tries to get the corner. Two to seven, first and goal. Tim Blackwell. We, we talked about Tim Blackwell in the beginning of the show. He left the team, came back as a walk-on. He's paying his way right now, Mike. It's a great story. I know you know more about it than I do. He paid his way because he got his butt kicked off the team. Yep. He was a slacker. And he got his act together. He was young when he came here at 17. Yep. Wasn't ready to handle everything that was put on his plate. Made some mistakes. Has earned it back. The respect of the coaches, his teammates, and in the classroom has done a great job as well. First and goal. They go opposite. Hits it to Blackwell. He's at the five. Pushing towards the end goal. He is just shot. Second and goal coming up. 
Well, one thing he brought with him is a burst. That's one thing that he's able to do when he gets the ball into the open field. This is still that same Nebraska defense, but now Southern Miss has a little bit of momentum. They're going to fake this way, come back, and watch Blackwell get the pitch here. Good relationship. And the big thing here is Alvin's starting to feel it a little bit. At this time, he attacks Barrett Rude, waited to the last second, and pitched it out to Blackwell to pick up almost a touchdown. Now it's second and goal. Asking for quiet so they can hear the snap count. Almond pitching forward. The flag is down. Let's check the marker first. It came from the official lined up at the top of the screen a along lot of, the line of scrimmage. A lot of times that's when the defensive linemen line up offside. Yep. They do that on the goal line because they had to. They made no touchdown signal. Oh. The line drive, that's exactly what Jeff Bauer is asking. Was, was he in? We don't need the half the distance. Apparently, he was not. Yes. You got to go back to ARP yeah. here, right? Okay, you got to run a quarterback sneak again. But this is an interesting stat. The Nebraska defense has only let two drives before this one in the red zone in the last 14 quarters. Ha! What a stat that was. Thank you. <laughs> Three tries. Here's Almond pushing the pile. Another penalty marker is down. That's oh. usually from a spot where you have too many men on the field. He was thrown by one of the officials in the back who is responsible for counting players. No one's trying to hide or <laughs> escape. <laughs> Let's see what we have. Yep. That's it. That's Mike. That's Mike. That's that the rule book right to the left there. He's, he's, he's got, got, got the, the play chart. He's got everything lined up. Rule book off to the left. That's because of that golf. I know. You know, he's got he that. Follows it he all. follows it all. That's not going to make Bo Pelini or Frank Solich very happy. So Nebraska's defense, what you were talking about, has allowed very few people inside the red zone. None in half two. But here... Blades of grass between the ball and the goal line. Blackwell, who ran it close, runs it in. Touchdown. I agree with the AARP rule here. You got two, two goals. You're on the one inch line. That ball bounced. He bounced that almost back all the way to the to the five yard line. So set up by the punt return of 37 yards for Young. Blackwell adds the touchdown. Another marker is down. As the extra point well, guys, is knocked yeah. in by Michaela. Yep. Well, Nebraska's played so little goal line defense this year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they're not used to the personnel. Who's supposed to be in? They had 12 on the field one more time. <laughs> Southern Miss had to really to stay in the game and the big punt return the good defensive stand before it blackwell's running and maybe we'll have a back in rock in hattiesburg inside of two minutes the home team back in the game all the way down in the very southern part of this state this is actually the largest uh University in this state now. Yep. Enrollment has passed uh, our friends in Oxford and Starkville, Ole Miss and Mississippi State. So important for them to catch momentum right before the half. Now with a minute 57, it's important for their defense to maintain that momentum to go in to come out for that second half. If I was Nebraska, I would not try to score. I just run big run away and pound away and go in with 17-7. Because if you make a mistake, you really give these guys a shot. Jacob Matlock is the kickoff man. Another penalty marker down on the kickoff. Josh Davis brings back the kick across the 25 to the 27-yard line. The penalty marker was thrown right back at the kickoff spot at the 35. And now another flag comes in. So things are getting sloppy here. 
couple of two different infractions to be penalty flag on the field. sorted out by the Big 12 crew. Already 10 penalties on the night. Six Nebraska, four Southern Miss. <clears throat> that's the encroachment on the kickoff, and they're both on Southern Miss. Well, that's so, how you, I was going to say, that's how you kill momentum. Yeah. That's a good way to hurt the momentum there. So your choice here is you get the ball at the 45 or you make them re-kick. Take it at the 45. I take it at the 45 Absolutely. because Absolutely. you should also save about 10 seconds. Just to, and you start banging away. Take the ball at the 45, you line up, get after it. Well, I would go for a field goal. I'd try to drive the ball in effectively sure. and kick a long field goal. Just stick I with your offense. Plenty of time. Ball but I, the but I would not throw the ball effectively because they can't throw the ball effectively. <laughs> <laughs> the first match on the kicking team is the prize. The first to foul against the kicking team. Penalized from the end of the line, 15 yards, first down. All right, let's check in with Chris Fowler, see what he has planned at halftime. That was his... That was his uh, Coming up on the Pontiac High Performance Half Number Four, we'll, we'll play five questions, guys. <laughs> and I'll tell you why the two-quarterback system does work at Oregon. I'm going to look at Notre Dame and answer the question, where is their offense? I'm still looking. <laughs> we only have so much time at halftime, plus the singular wireless poll, a chance for you to log on about what should the BCS do next year, given the success of conferences like Conference USA and the MAC. Let's welcome it up at halftime, guys. All right, pal, see you in a little bit. Trev, you might be looking until about November to find that offense, buddy. That's a long way off because they start getting going. First down, they look to throw it more. Yeah. He's pressured, in trouble, yeah. and goes down back at the 37-yard line. Ronald Jones brought the initial heat. And a loss of five. Remember, Nebraska does not have any timeout. And remember, Nebraska doesn't have a two-minute drill. <laughs> so... What are you talking about? They don't, I promise you, if they practice it, they don't hit five passes out of 20. Because the guy can't throw the ball effectively. And I'm telling you, they should run the option play. You think it's the scheme, or you think it's Jamal Lord throwing? Jamal Lord throwing. The coach has got the play. Run the option. Very leisurely here. Option with Lord. Jamal took it across the 45 to the 47. Yeah. Well, third down coming up. Jamal Lord on the paper. No timeouts, remember, for Nebraska to stop it. Michael Bowley and Alex Ray making the stop for Going Southern back to that Michigan. touchdown from earlier. I think we were all surprised. They got it in, but it was a little bit surprising with the call. They got two penalties in a row, got it to the one-inch line, and then they look how far he had to go back because of the penetration. But clearly, he crossed the goal line to give him some momentum, and now third and four, big play here. Fox ticking. Run the option. I got you. I'm surprised Southern Miss didn't take a timeout, and I understand why. They don't want to help Nebraska's cause here. Lord Peeping, he's down there. Yeah. Nope, Jeff Bauer doesn't want to call it. He's going to take the momentum of 17-7 in the locker room for halftime. After three personal fouls, you're right. probably right. You don't, want, you don't want to rough the punter. So Nebraska's defense, which has been great in the second half, will be tested here. Because the Cornhuskers in 34 plays, 11 of the passes, only totaled 118 yards. Southern Miss's defense hasn't been horrible here in the first half. And their offense gained some momentum. That's why Bauer chose to run it down and get to the second half. 17-0, things did not look pretty. No first downs. Jeff Bauer's team crawls back in it with a big punt return late in the half. And here's Jerry with the Southern Miss head coach. Hey, coach, you opted to take the ball in the opening kickoff. Were you trying to make a statement against the best defense in the country? That's news to me. I thought we lost the toss and they deferred. That's what I was told. But you guys won the toss and elected to receive in the opening kickoff. So. I did not know that. If that's what happened, that's poor communication because that wasn't supposed to happen. We thought the kid might have made a mistake. What about the difference between the first and second quarter? What turned this team around? A different football team we saw in the second quarter. Well, we didn't play with much poise the first quarter. We gave them a short field, fumble, interception, shank punt, two delay penalties, or two offside penalties. You know, we just didn't show much poise, and Dustin's missed some checks in there. You know, he's got to settle down a little bit, but the big punt return got us back in it. Hey, thanks, Coach. Thank you. Mike? All right, Don, thank you. We're checking up here as well. Just double check. It's possible the official went to the wrong direction and never tapped his shoulders, but as all of us watched, they went to Southern Miss first. Pontiac High Performance Halftime Report coming up with Chris Trevenmark in the studio. Nebraska leads by 10 here in Hattiesburg. All right, Chris, Mark, and Trev, thank you guys. Certainly not going to decide it here, but thank you for participating in our poll tonight. Nebraska leads 17-7. They will get the ball to start the third quarter. 
I've spent all of halftime, and so has Doc Punch, finding out what happened on the coin toss. I still don't like the answer I have, but the bottom line is Nebraska won the toss, deferred the option of the second half, so they received the ball, and here is Davis, their eye back, with some blockers. Across the 30 into open territory, taken down at the 47-yard line. So a poor coverage, good job on the return by Nebraska to start this third quarter. It's Nebraska 17, Southern Miss 7. Here's what happened. Out, and I've confirmed this with the Southern Miss radio guys who were carrying it live. The referee asked Rod Davis, the captain from Southern Miss, who's tossing the coin. He said, I'm not tossing the coin. They said, well, who's calling it? Rod Davis said, we're the home team. <laughs> right. We're not calling it. Then they went to Nebraska, correctly called it. The governor of Mississippi was here, flipped the coin. The referee didn't make the normal signal. He gets it and defers. He just said Southern Miss takes the ball. First down run by Jamal Lord, the quarterback. The option worked nicely there as he got out to the 45, a pickup of seven yards. Can we come back on camera, guys, one second so we can absolve Jeff Bauer of any poor decision-making in that whole situation? When you defer, the referee's supposed to go to Lee. If he defers, to tap him and say no, and then walk to the other side to Kirk and said he will receive. That's how everybody knows. That signal was never made, and that was the confusion all the way around. And Jerry Punch talked to the officials, and we're going to get their story of it momentarily. But those are the facts as reported by the Southern Miss radio crew, which carried the coin toss live on the air. Davis runs right. He stopped right about close to the first down, where his forward progress is. I think we're going to have a measurement here at the 42. Let's go down to Doc and find out what he found out. Jerry? Well, Mike, at halftime, I went up into the Big 12 officials' locker room and asked them if I could ask them a couple of questions. They were very gracious with their time, and they said, indeed, there was no question in their mind that Nebraska won the toss, and they elected to defer to the second half. The concern was the things, same things that we had heard, is there may have been some confusion in the signaling, which is exactly what Jeff Bauer was told after our interview going in at halftime. He got in the locker room and was told by people on his own staff that they thought the signal was that they had won the toss and elected to receive. That's why we had so much confusion, and he was even confused, and finally at halftime we got the word from the officials that they indeed did not win the toss and Nebraska would get the ball in the second half. Good stuff Doc, thank you. First down, option here is Davis, the eye back. Good play in the alley by Antoine Cash, the weak side linebacker. I think the reason we make that whole point is Jeff Bauer didn't make a mistake as we had thought he did when he decided to take the ball first. Let's look at the numbers the way they broke down guys in the first half and spin them ahead to the second half, the impact coming up here on this game. Well the numbers are not going to jump off the screen if you're a Nebraska Cornhusker fan with the exception of the turnovers, being able to create the turnovers had given their offense the short field, and they were able to capitalize and put up 17 points. And look at their offense right now, what they're doing. They're not doing much, but the big turnovers in the first quarter allowed them to get 17 points on the board. This is second down, and let's call it a look. Lord, just a straight drop and throw, and in trouble now. He kept his balance. He kept his balance again, but not the third time. A loss of eight, Terrence Ford made the sack. Whew. Relentless pressure from the Southern Miss defenders in their black shirts. When you're a receiver and your quarterback is trying to fight for time, you've got to do some things to move around to help him. You got some people there, they're open, but look, try to move around. If your quarterback trying to survive, you got to do something to try to get open. Is that part of not being in a passing yeah, offense on a regular exactly. basis? Mark LaFleur, he comes to the near side. Quarterback draw with Lord. They are waiting for that play every time now on third down. Rod Davis is having a Rod Davis kind of game. What looked to be a Nebraska march becomes a Nebraska punch. Big kickoff return, Lee, and I, I think it looked like Nebraska was ready to regain some momentum, but great stop by Southern Miss. you got to give Tyrone Nix, the defensive coordinator, a lot of credit there because he put in that diamond defense before the game, a new defense. He used the three of the four plays right there and was very, very effective. Tyrone Nix is one of the best young defensive coordinators in the country. Great halftime adjustment. Kyle Larson sets a punch. Try to pin Marvin Young and Southern Miss inside the tent. Got this one to bounce back. Beautiful kick. Can they get to it? They do at the two. That stayed in the air about 4.7 seconds. Terrific hang time to cover for Larson and company. About? 4.7. <laughs> well, Mike Black, who's our spotter in the booth here, is a 
former kicker in the Arena League, so we've got kicking dialed in here on Thursday nights. That's the Scooters 40 time, right? <laughs> well, they know about good punting in this stadium. Ray Guy. Ray Guy. You can comfortably say the best ever. Oh, yes, sir. The, the best ever. Yep. The award for college punters named after the former Southern Miss and Oakland Raiders star. Long field for the Golden Eagles. Dustin Allman, the quarterback, gives to Tim Blackwell. Not much there. Jerry, can they uh, shake free the oh, offense here in half two? Well, Mike, at halftime, Jeff Bauer's uh, instructions were quite simple. we got to play with poise and composure and eliminate the foolish fouls, the three personal foul penalties. They're going to make some adjustments up front, particularly with the tight end, to try to make uh, give, to give Dusty a little more time. They're scraping a linebacker and getting pressure off Dusty. He's not having much time to throw the football. So adjustments up front on the blocking scheme to try to give him a little more time to throw the quick outs. All right, we'll watch with Terrell Broden, the tight end. He's lined up near side. Oh, almost a safety as a great penetration by Bernard Thomas, who made the first down play as well. Thomas grew up in East Palo Alto, California, and Palo Alto is seen by many as such a beautiful area, but the highway separates a great neighborhood from a tough neighborhood. He grew up on the tough side of town. His dad in prison for murder and drug possession. His mom, aunt, grandmother, great-grandmother were the ones who raised him, took care of him, and he plays for them. They make quite a play for the Huskers, now third and long. Almond throws, incomplete. Antoine Currington was stretched out, and Philip Land was coming fast. And now remember, we have a snapper snapping in his first game. They have a short snap, not the 15 yards you want, and a good punt returner in Davis waiting. And one of the things here is when you're in this situation, you don't have enough distance. You got to kick it quick. But when you kick it quick, there's no coverage. I bet you they get the ball at least the 30 yard line. Luke Johnson gets wow. it out of there. A rocket of a Hello. kick. 56 yards. Davis from his own 43. I was wrong. That's a great, great play. Awesome punt. Awesome punt. Good snap, too. Right? Yeah, wow. right there. That was a tremendous punt. What do you guys do on Saturday night? Give him a helmet sticker there? Oh, yeah. Give him oh. a little uh, helmet sticker <laughs> Thursday night style. <laughs> <laughs> Southern Miss had offers, financial offers from the folks in Lincoln, Nebraska, and Kansas City to try to get this game off campus, but they stayed here. Their fans have been great. Their defensive coordinator, Tyro Nix, played in this stadium, has played so many big teams on the road. One of the big boys is coming to town now. His defense, a good job now, but breaking free is the receiver. Wide open for the touchdown, Ross Pilkington. The danger of the option. You can get sucked in by it. And up top for 44 yards, Lords of Pilkington puts Nebraska back up. When you run option, that thing opens up. And the opportunity, we've seen the Huskers hit big plays in the past at the tight end. Pilkington gets downfield there. The old wingbacks used to. The extra point is added, and it's 24 to 7. Big play. First of all, Southern Miss has nine guys inside the box area to defend the run. Pilkington's going to come in motion and then get behind coverage. And the reason he's able to do that is because of the option action. Watch Lord come down. How many times have we seen him do it tonight? Down. Look at the defense zeroing in on the run, allowing Pilkington to get behind the coverage, and not one defender follows him. He's 10 yards behind the defense. Ford makes the throw. Touchdown, Nebraska. That's that, the danger of defending that option attack. And that Pilkington's an interesting story. He was two years he played baseball yep. in the minor leagues. He was a three-year starter in basketball, track, and great shortstop in high school with a 3.8 business administration degree. What total a pack. football. That's a total package. I'm telling you, the guy's a total package right there. You see where he's from, sweetheart? Let's see. Fort Collins, Colorado. Oh, boy. I'm telling you. The total package right there. And the thing I, I'm, impressed about, I'm impressed about, I'm impressed about a lot of Nebraska guys, they're very, very good students. 
They got some really good students in that team. They have nine players who've already graduated, Lee. Another 12 on schedule to graduate by the end of this season. John Eubanks kickoff return for Southern Miss taken out to the 27-yard line. Oh. A real back-breaking score there for Pilkington. The longest play from scrimmage for Nebraska this year, 44 yards. Two things that have stood out to me tonight about Nebraska's offense. Sure, they've had opportunities because of the defensive play, but they've, they've both at the beginning of the game and the beginning of the, the second half killed the will of Southern Miss. Just when it looks like Southern Miss is ready to get some momentum, Nebraska comes back and drops the hammer down. And don't forget that Kyle Larson putting the ball inside the five was a key play. Yep. Field position wise. First down run. Tim Blackwell explodes into the secondary. Blackwell pushed down at the 44. First down. Pick up of 17 for the junior. Who's shaken up. Michael knocked out of bounds by Daniel Bullock. And earlier, Rod uh, Davis was hobbled. Uh, two of the stars offensively and defensively hobbled right now from Southern Miss. Down 17 as if it's not enough to try to move the ball against this defense. This defense is not allowed a point in the second half. So it is a, it a defense that continues to get better as the game goes on, making adjustments. Pulled out too early. Ball is down. Huskers mm -hmm. might have it. Second time, on, Allman and Jim Hicks have not converted on the snap. And Nebraska recovers at the 44. Third turnover of the night for Southern Miss. Two of them coming on fumbled center quarterback exchanges. There's a mix-up there on the snap count. Half the offensive line didn't even move as the quarterback dropped back. And I... You know, the, the center brings the ball up, but I think Allman pulls out, and I don't think he's in there to be able to secure the football. From a former coach's standpoint, there's absolutely no excuse for the center quarterback exchange. Twice. Unless the court, well, not even I don't think tonight already oh, okay. twice. I got you. Right. Come on, man. I mean, you know, you know why? I'm fired up. I know. I'm fired up on that situation yeah. because yeah. even though they lost to Nicky D'Angelo. That quarterback has been working with that center all day long. I just, just need to get this in. The fullback had a carry. You know, the fullback you can get very upset oh. if you don't mention the one time the fullback gets to touch it with Steve Freewald, who had that. You gotta, feed, back you gotta feed the big boy up front, keep him happy. Jerry, with cramping issues going on down there? Absolutely. Take a look at Rod Davis on his way yep. limping toward the Southern Miss locker room. Got to believe they're going to try to get some fluids in him here. He has just laid it all on the line. That right calf was as solid as a rock. And the right calf was cramping up. He could not go back in. So they're going to get him in, try to get some fluids in him, and get him back out as quickly as possible. Carried by David Horn, the backup by back. He is Scott for a loss of a couple. Eric Scott had a nice game here tonight, made the play. I saw Blackwell come out and go right away for fluids as well, and I think Pilkington was getting an IV on the other sideline as well. So we uh, have some cramp issues on both sides right now. Rod Davis, Rod Davis is a, a four-year starter. He was really looking forward to having an opportunity in this game. when Davis went yep. down during that kick coverage right away grabbing that leg third and ten Lord going long ball down the middle it is caught for a touchdown by Flewellen Isaiah Flewellen and the Huskers hit another home run in the passing game I thought Lord's not supposed to be able to throw the ball All right. that was part of the rules <laughs> I mean, he, he looks like a pocket quarterback there. Well, yeah. this is what everybody's been saying from the Nebraska coaching side. Give us time. You'll yeah. see more of the passing. Remember, they had an off Saturday, so they had 10 days to prepare for this game. A little more of the passing offense that's been installed unveiled here tonight. And maybe the people of Lincoln have quit, quit talking about Joe Daly. And they, and they, they got themselves Jamal Lord, a good quarterback. Two touchdown passes, 44 and 43 yards within the last two minutes. Well, Nebraska's been averaging 13 passes per game in their first three. Only 39 passes all season. They've thrown 13 here tonight, two of them for touchdowns here in quarter number three, as extended to a 31-7 Cornhusker lead at Southern Miss. 
Isaiah Flewellen just caught the last one. Short kickoff. Does not catch Southern Miss Napping. And Anthony Harris able to bring it out to the 36-yard line. Anthony Harris on the return. Well, Lee, the Home Depot coaching adjustments, one Nebraska's made very successfully. Let's go back to the first touchdown. Offensive coordinator Barney Cotton obviously saw what we saw. There's 11 men eight yards from the line of scrimmage, and number 28, Patrick Hewitt, in the middle of the picture, right there is the safety. You see him turn around and go, and it's all good night, sweetheart. Number 28, trying to catch him, Kirk. Good adjustment by Barney Cotton right there, the offensive coordinator at halftime. They really lull you to sleep by running the option to crack blocks with that motion inside, and then they're able to go play action off the option to pass. James Wally runs for a couple of yards for a second and seven James coming up. Wally, so Ross Kilkington gets the first touchdown, then the last one to Isaiah Fluell in the redshirt freshman. Well, this is really an interesting play call because it's third and long and you have both receivers that are going to try to get down the field vertical and puts the pressure on the free safety to make a decision now this is drop back passing by nebraska the free safety is going to bite here and go behind it for the big play and fluellen gets nice read into the end zone second and eight dustin almond's throw is high and incomplete he tried to get it to Caleb Hendricks. And he could not convert. Before we leave that Isaac Flewellen, you and I were talking about him, Mike. His dad was a chaplain of the Air Force in Germany, and that's why he was born over there. And he's one of the kids who just had a great practice, and all of a sudden everything started clicking for him. That plus his speed, he looks the most like a wide receiver who can get down the field than any of the Nebraska Bucks. Well, with this offensive sy system, it's built still around the option. To have a guy that can stretch the defense is so key as they get further along into this season. If Llewellyn could be that guy along with Pilkington. Pressure up the middle, flushes Dustin Allman. Going to try to run for it, dive for it. Very good awareness of where the line was. It's all going to depend on the spot. Now do spot it over at the 46, and we're going to have a Time measurement here. Time out for a measurement. As we said before, Almond has started three games, came in in a reserve role in a couple of other games, including the bowl game against Oklahoma State that Southern Miss played in last year. So he has good awareness out there. And there he knew exactly where he had to go for the first down. Try to die for it. All right. Go for it. Yeah. Got to go for it. What's the difference? It's 31-7. You're going to get beat anyhow. What's the difference? 61-14. Go for it, coach. Mickey D'Angelo, who was the starting quarterback until the concussion problems, concurs with you. But I would not take that ball back to the six yards back like they did on the goal. You want to bounce it? Uh, no, I would, I would take it. If you can't make an inch and a half of a quarterback sneak, you don't deserve to win. Well? Yeah. Quarterback sneak it on a quick count. It's not about winning. It's about pride. It's well, he might come back. Remember, Mike Never. said that hey, he's not in the barn yet or something like that. I said that about an hour ago. Farmer. Just need a couple of chain links here. Thank you. And they'll get it with Dustin Allman for the first down. Allman will be quarterback keeper. First down, Southern Miss. Let's go check in with Jerry Punch, Doc. Well, guys, we told you this game was going to be huge for Hattiesburg. They have just been handed the numbers. A new attendance record here at this stadium. 36,152 people on hand. They brought in 3,000 bleachers from Atlanta that are involved with the PGA Tour. And so now a new record. The previous record uh, was set uh, back in 2002, 35-169. But 36-152, a new record here in Hattiesburg for a home football game. Well, they should be very proud of that. Big night for them. Almond throws down the middle wide open. Antoine Currington to the 25. Pickup of 28 longest of the season for Currington. Well, here's a nice little note, you guys. You ready for this one? The farthest any opponent has dri driven in the second half against Nebraska is to the 30-yard line. And if I'm not mistaken, that's the 25. Last time I checked. I mean, we're killing them with these stats tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Story stats. He's just... 
Uh, actually, a really good throw there in between the linebacker and the safety. Allman now 3 of 15 passing here tonight. Option with Wally. Ball on the ground. I... Nebraska recovers. Turnover number four of the night. And Demario Williams, who has forced fumbles and had sacks all season, continues to be opportunistic for the Huskers. This time, Allman made up his mind he was going to pitch it and lead the way like a pulling guard. <laughs> but the one thing he did is he got careless with the pitch. Right now, he decides, I'm pitching it and going. Let's go. Follow me. But he got a little bit quick with the pitch. Yeah. You know, that Williams kid's an interesting story, too. In the offseason, he's a speaker at the Attention Center for Youth in Lincoln. Does a lot of things for the community. What a good-looking football player and a great young man. Mario Williams is. In this new scheme, he's really becoming a valuable asset. He does so many Woo! different things for him. Lord, drop back and put it up for grabs. Intended yeah. for Flewellen, and it's incomplete. I'm going to show you the whole pass book here they, from Nebraska. Are they getting giddy down there? Or what? <laughs> hey, What's going on down there? Well, this is what people want to know. Yeah. Can they do it? Second down. Can they become a passing team? And you saw some of it there in uh, the last two touchdown passes from Lord. That's also for the rest of the opponents. They have to work on every once in a while. But this is a running football team. They're going to sure. beat you with the run. If you have to beat them with the pass, they will lose three or four big ball games in here. The, the big thing is, if people are going to put nine and ten guys up in the box, they have to have the ability to throw. And that tonight, they've shown that ability. Cody Ross gets some snaps. Mm. The third string high back, sophomore out of Denver. They do so much recruiting. Over in Colorado, he's forced out of bounds. You know, Lee, you talked about Demario Williams yep. and what he does off the field. When we talked to him this week, as you see his major sociology, I said, what do you want to do with a, your life after football? I said, I'd love to coach. Working with guys and helping guys mature and grow is a great thing for me, especially because I grew up in a generation where so many kids don't have a dad around to be an example, and the coaches are a lot of that. And around guys like Frank Solich and his defensive coordinator, Bo Pelini, he's getting some great examples, and he wants to follow in their footsteps. Ross almost lost the handoff, got it back. And it's a Stewart brought him down, and Nebraska will be forced to punt. No gain on the play. Shirt, baby. Shirt. Shirt. You know, an interesting stat I brought up before, <laughs> but you've got to understand this. This is important. The first junior college player elected captain since 1957. Does that say a lot about this At guy? Nebraska. At Nebraska. Nebraska. All about his character. Oh. Oh, it, I'm telling you, he's, he's a completely Hard different enough. player this year. Not only with what, the way they're using him, but the commitment that he has made on and off the field. And I think his teammates recognize that. That's why he's a captain. Kyle Larson waiting to punt. We're missing somebody out here. And Nebraska's going to be forced to take time out. The only thing Nebraska struggled with is substitutions here tonight. You, you know the interesting thing about this, Jeff Jamrod, mm -hmm. the special teams coach? Remember we were trying to have a meeting with Frank Scholes? He was the only coach looking at films last night. Remember? I don't know, coach. Better look at some more films. Woo. Back here in Hattiesburg, Nebraska leading Southern Miss 31-7. Cornhuskers steamrolling towards 4-0. They play Troy State back in Lincoln a week from Saturday. Could be in great shape to go 5-0 into the bulk of their Big 12 play. Remember, they already beat Oklahoma State in conference for the season opener. Kyle Larson set to punt. High snap. Good grab. Can't get it away. And Southern Miss will have great field position at the 27-yard line. The line. It was Coley comes oh. up with the tackle. Not a great moment in Husker history. Well, the whole special teams have been out of kilt. You know, that, that time the snap was so high, but it's a good thing that Kyle Larson was a good athlete or he never got that ball. That's a great play. Nice play. That's Richie Fine Incognito. 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 Now we got a situation here. Nebraska is not, right. the black shirts have not allowed a touchdown and it's a point in the second half. All right, we'll see. See what happens here. Lawrence and Currington, the receivers, on the draw, it's Wally, seeking space, 
Got close to eight yards to the 20 yard line. Well, if I was Chris Berman given incognito a nickname, I'd call him Disguise. Wouldn't that be a great one? Disguise incognito? Yeah. No, it's just that name. <laughs> See, all the Berman names, no, you have to, yeah, they retain to, the name. The middle oh, name has to be. Richie Disguised Incognito. Oh, Disguised Incognito. Yes, right. Disguised, disguised incognito. yeah. No, it doesn't work. I don't know. Well, it's 31 to 7. What do you expect? <laughs> but you, you had that on your chart there. If it was 3 nothing. you were going to try that on us. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting. You should have waited longer. You think about that at the hotel. <laughs> I know, I thought about that. You're taking the sun out by the pool today. Yeah. Second oh, and two. Good stuff by the pool. Wally got the corner. Got the first down. He is in the game because uh, Tim Blackwell, the starter, is out. Let's go check in with Jerry. And Mike, not good news for the Golden Eagle fans. Tim Blackwell, their starting tailback, will not play anymore tonight. He has a pretty significant sprain of the ankle. They were trying to get him to go early in the second half. He was running on one and a half wheels and this couldn't go. It began to swell, so he is done for the night. Wally is the man. Rod Davis, who went back to as Jerry said, get some fluids in him, was cramping up. He's come back out of their uh, new beautiful football facility in the end zone. A little reverse. The pitch to Marvin Young. Made it happen on the punt return earlier, but the black shirts were waiting that time. Josh Bullock, up from his free safety spot, made the tackle. A nice play here by Bullocks to come back. A lot of the def most of the defense swarming to the left here, but he comes back and actually makes a good play and taking on a lot of blockers back this way. The momentum of the offense, everybody ro rolling this way, but watch watch the recovery by this secondary, and Bullocks gets right up underneath the, the blockers and makes a good play. That was pretty serious acceleration. Okay. Very good. So it's second and nine, three receivers. No tight end. Four in the pattern. Almond's throw is incomplete. His receiver, Lawrence, slipped. Almond's pass incomplete. And nearly became a pick six going the other way for Lornell McPherson, the nickelback. Bring up Southern Miss, third down. Kirk, you had mentioned it earlier how here in 2003, through three games and now this third quarter, Nebraska has kept a bagel up on the opponent's side of the ledger. There's a lot of pride on the line for that Nebraska defense. You heard when we had a camera down, the audio, you heard Demario Williams say the shirts, the shirts. They've taken a lot of pride in this defense, not giving up any points. Bad snap mm -hmm. out of the gun and a whistle for a false start. Fire the snap, false start, on the offense, five yard penalty, still third down. Frustrating night for that guy yeah. because his team has played big teams on the road with more poise than they have shown here tonight at home. And you think when you go on the road, it's the tougher environment. Sometimes being at home and all the buildup may have you not as sharp and focused as you are on a business trip, on a road trip. Especially early in the game, a lot of emotion, maybe pressing a little bit early. Took him right out of the game. A pretty darn good opponent, too. <laughs> Screen is taken away. Fired it there in the middle for Harris, incomplete. <laughs> they're just waiting on it. I mean, they're, they're waiting for that play. If you look, take a look at number 74, Brandon Teamer, a freshman, 6'5", 270. He's the one that makes this play right there. You see that big freshman tackle up to the outside? He stayed in his position, Kirk, and forces them to throw the screen inside of him. Nice play that time by Teamer. Teamer did a nice job of yeah. Trevor Johnson. The yeah. defensive lineman, they read it right away. They started to run out to the back. They were underneath it. If they would have thrown that to the back on time, it would have been intercepted. You can get a first down at the six. Here comes a blitz. Salmon throws high and incomplete. Had to get rid of it with the pressure coming. He is now three of 18 throwing here on the night. 10 of 40 passing for the season. And the uh, Nebraska faithful, Husker Nation, that made the trip to Hattiesburg, supporting the defense. I know it's 31 to seven, but that's a happy Nebraska defense oh, sure. holding that streak. Jeff Bauer's team, I talked about the non-conference test that they've had on the road and this rare one at home. This became such an important game for them program-wise because they got somebody in the caliber of Nebraska to come to Hattiesburg in a two-for-one situation. 
touchdown carry out to about the 23-yard line. We talked about going on the road. Let's go back to 91. These are non-conference games when East Carolina and Louisville were not in conference with Southern Miss. Look at all the places they've gone to play ranked teams. These are all teams ranked at the time. Eight times to Bama, three to Florida, two down to the Plains to play Auburn, Tennessee, A&M, Nebraska, Penn State, Florida State. Nobody ever comes here except for Texas A&M. And Nebraska here tonight adds to that. Nice run by Ross into the secondary across the 30. And Corey, the sophomore, takes it out. Lost the ball carrier. For first down yardage at the 33. Is the with, the, yard line with the more and more upsets that we see from the smaller schools beating the bigger schools, it's going to become even tougher and tougher for the southern misses of the world to be able to somehow lure in and bring in a, a Nebraska, a Florida State, a Texas A&M. Teams are not going to want to come into an environment like this, even though Nebraska came out took Southern Miss behind the woodshed tonight. Still, it's a lot of these upsets are going to prevent teams from being willing to do that. First and 10 from the 33. Jamal Lord, the quarterback. Nothing going with the option there. Try to make something happen and minimize the loss to just a yard. If I was a Nebraska staff, I'd bring Joe Daly, the quarterback, in, let him play the fourth quarter. The game is obviously... Southern Miss can't win this football game, so I would bring in Daly and let him have at least a quarter of action and do a couple of things because they're going to need him along the line because the more Lord runs the football, the better chance he is to get him hurt. Mm -hmm. and he's the guy. He's the number yeah, two guy. Good, right? He needs as many reps as he can get. Yep. They say get into a tough environment. They need to be able to pull on him and the experience that he might be able to gain. Second and 11, also a chance for Lord to work on his throwing a little bit more, although he runs it here. He gets it out past the 35-yard line. Antoine Cash to tackle Akeem Lockett, who's the player whose headgear came off. Cash he's okay. Lockett, making the tackle for Southern Miss. You know, guys, let's go back for those uh, folks who weren't with us in the first half conversation about Jamal Lord. Uh, replacing Eric Crouch, so many pressures on him because he had played a little bit, so I think everybody's expecting things to keep moving on. But we got to the point where Nebraska did not become an improved passing offense, took a step back, didn't have a player of Crouch's ability, making the moves and the option, I back to go with it. Put all that together, and Jamal Lord faced a tumult of pressure, the likes of which a Nebraska quarterback hasn't felt for a while. Third down throw is a nice throw, but incomplete as it comes in and out of the hands of Flewellen trying to come back to it. I think at times with this system, it's unfair to point the finger directly at the quarterback because they just haven't had playmakers at wide receiver to help take the pressure off of that quarterback and off of the running game, the option attack. And I think last year, that's one of the things that really hurt Jamal Lord. They didn't have a sophisticated scheme and on passing the football, and they also they didn't have any playmakers at wide receiver. They seem to have more of that this year. Well, Frank Solich told us, you know, he had over 2,600 yards. If a quarterback threw for 2,600 yards, he sees a great guy with one yard rushing. Yep. This guy's an all-around athlete. He's a terrific quarterback. Trouble last snap. Incognito's snap is a lot better this time. And the kick is away from Kyle Larson. Pretty one. Didn't give Young much room to run. Well covered. A loss of a couple of yards on the play. Kick of 44 yards. Incognito a happier man now after the successful snap. Well, look at what you had to follow. <laughs> Tommy Frazier, two national titles. Scott Frost, the national title in 97. And Eric Crouch closing it out with the Heisman. You're looking at guys there, the three of them put together 92 wins in that stretch. 92 and 12 as starters. There's a lot of pressure. And then when you go 7-7 seven and seven yeah. that next year, you're going to hear the tumult of why did it go wrong for you in this situation when it went well for everybody else to the point where he stopped doing interviews last season. The pressure and the frustration really got to him. I got an answer then. Almond pass incomplete. Fans getting frustrated. You know why Lord had a lot of pressure on him? Last year's defense allowed an average of 23 points a game. That's the worst since 1957. That's why they were 7-7. Seven and seven. They were lousy on defense. This year, that guy's going to... Lord's going to be a lot better quarterback sure. with the way that defense is playing. Defense is playing great, giving the offense I'm the done. ball in great field position. It, you know, coming into tonight, they averaged their starting field position their own 40. And after tonight, I'm sure that's improved, even getting closer to midfield. Sharon Moore is in the game as the one back. 
He's in the pattern as Allman lets a deep one go for Kenneth Johnson. Incomplete. Got tangled with Fabian Washington. Back here in the secondary. We talked about Fabian Washington being from Bradenton, Florida, Tommy Fraser is. He was a sprint high school champion in Florida, and he's at Nebraska. Now, to get a couple of guys like that on wideout positions. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now they're ready. Now they're ready. That guy's a terrific-looking football player for only a sophomore. Well, he came in last year as a true freshman and set Nebraska records for pass breakups mm. and interceptions with four. And he on one side, Gross on the other side, Dewan Gross, and they had, a, you know, some solid corners, and Washington saw some heat with Gross's presence there. Thrown away from the talented player. Mid-round pick in the NFL draft this past year. Third and ten. This time a pocket to throw, but uh, nowhere near. As it was partially deflected at the line of scrimmage. So Almond's missed his last six. He's missed 18 of his 21 throws. And he'll have to kick it away. You see three at 21, and a lot of that has to do with He's being confused with the variety of looks and the multiple looks of this defense. Just watching these guys, they've come up with a different blitz or a different zone package, zone blitz, almost every time they've been in third and long. Confused, sure. but I don't like his throwing action. No. He throws that thing and it goes flying over everything. Doesn't follow through enough. Luke Johnson to punt. Good job, Luke. That's a nice kick. Oz Davis will take it straight up the field, the starting eye back. Nice return to midfield, but here comes the marker. Josh Davis on the return. Penalty flag on the 48 field. on the punt. A return of 17 will be cut into by the flag. Holy on the return team. 10 yards penalty. First down. College game day heading to West Point at Army, 10.30 a.m. Eastern. And then we go to the Big Ten at noon. See number 20 and undefeated Minnesota, Saad Abdul Khalik, their quarterback, visiting Joe Paterno in Penn State. And then South Carolina takes on Tennessee at 7.45 Eastern. That game available on ESPN HD, which is now available nationwide. Call your local cable operator or direct TV today. College football Saturday on ESPN. Every game a must win. Slate of action on ESPN2 as well this weekend. As we wrap up the opening month of the season. Laura keeps it for a couple, and that will leave us one play left before we get to the fourth quarter. He got out of bounds, I think. And I still, I don't hey, understand he's why he's in there. Yeah. I know. I mean, I'm 31 to 7. This is his last series. I hope so, be because you got to get Joe Take Davis some playing eight. time, number 12, a freshman. He's going to come in for the fourth. I hope he doesn't break his leg in the last four seconds, running an option. Yep. It, it, it also helps them leave for throwing the ball. Uh, everybody's talked about how much they throw the ball, and they gain some confidence throwing it here in the third quarter, getting two touchdowns. Yeah, I want right. to drop back a few times here. But I know your point. I just win today, wake up tomorrow. Start over. Mm -hmm. Running around, break an ankle. That's the end chase. It is uh, brought down. Watch him get up late. Eric Scott. Eric Scott's had a very good night. Third time we've called his name in this quarter. And we've come to the end of the third. <laughs> you happy now, Kurt? That's nice. Yeah. Off we go to the fourth quarter. Little Red. We'll all be back. Off we go to quarter four with Dr. Jerry Punch, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreit, and our college football Thursday crew, Mike Tirico. Glad to have you on board here tonight from Hattiesburg. Southern Miss scored in the second late. Punt return got them close, but they really haven't been able to dig out of the hole that their turnovers and four special teams caused for a 17-0 deficit in the first seven and a half of the opening quarter. This is third down. Lord is hit and sacked. Congratulations. John Eubanks, the sophomore backup cornerback on the blitz with the hit and the sack and one of the Nebraska players shaken up. Chase well, Anderson, the right guard. We've seen this blitz all night on the other side. This time Eubanks comes off the corner. Nobody open. It gave him enough time there to, to put the big hit on 
Jamal Lord and Lee, you're right. That, that's the, that'll be the final series for Jamal Lord, you would think. Right, Coach? Well, if I was coaching him, he wouldn't have had that series because the guy's too valuable. Now, Barney Cotton, you see that guy? He's got to be the world's biggest offensive coordinator. Biggest appetite. And he ate three meals. Did he? And in fact, you thought one of them was for you. I thought, yeah, he sat down. Then, I thought he was bringing his spaghetti or something. I want to tell you a story about that guy, Barney Cotton. I coached against Nebraska when he was the tackle. And you know the worst thing about it? He covered punts. He was so fast. When you were coaching in when Indiana? When I was coaching in Indiana. Back late 75 through 78, you played right. Nebraska each I, year. I played him four times, and he was one of the offensive tackles, and he covered punts. <laughs> Holy mackerel. And I didn't do quite as well as Southern Mississippi is doing. <laughs> you hung around, right? I hung around one of the time. Former Nebraska offensive lineman. Snap back to Larson. Kyle gets it away. Marvin Young for the return from the 27. Pretzel down there, return of about 11. Let's go see where Dr. Jerry Punch is here at M.M. Roberts Stadium in Hattiesburg. Doc? Guys, I'm here just showing you a part of the future of this great university here. I am standing on the balcony of the brand new $11 million, 57,000 square foot uh, athletic center, which opened here back in April of this year. And this facility that I'm standing on is just the beginning because they have big plans for what's going to happen in the other end zone over in the south end. Now, this is what they're going to put on the other end of this stadium here. 30 million of a 50 million dollar donor project that's underway right now looks a lot like Canton Yards from the outside. Gorgeous architecture that will increase the stadium capacity to over 45,000. 30 executive suites up top a stadium club. A lot happening here in Southern Mississippi. Just the beginning. This facility I'm standing on here in the south end, and the new one going up in the north end in a couple of years from now. Great stuff, Doc. Dustin Allman's pass is caught by Deron Lawrence. Fourth pass completion of the night for Southern Miss. They've really uh, done wonders. That building down here to mm. our left where Jerry was just standing is uh, a very, very nice Southern facility as they've moved the coaches offices into and the uh, athletic department offices. Done a very nice job here in Hattiesburg. But the problem, to be very can and an unbelievable crowd tonight with Nebraska here, but there were some tickets still to be sold at the end of this morning. Usually, if Nebraska comes on the road someplace, it's a sellout without blinking. Almond on the key for the option. Takes it out to the 42-yard line. And it in no way says anything negatively about the people here in this Hattiesburg area. The Southern Miss program. Almond's a little shaken up there. His backup's a true freshman. They just don't have the population base around here to pull to get 50, 60,000 people into a football stadium. And you know, the, the loyal fans and students were great tonight. And a lot of the folks who are up there in the corners have uh, headed for the exits here with the score 31-7. But as this university grows in size, now with an enrollment 16,000, they'll get a bigger alumni base. If more stay in this area, then they'll have the opportunity to fill a 40,000-plus seat stadium. Almond hit in the face as he threw. Incomplete. Flags down for roughing the passer. Demario Williams got him up in the head. And uh, they're going to flag him 15 because of where the hit was. Yep. Too high. Personal foul, rugby the passer, helmet to the head yeah. against the defense, 15-yard penalty, Good automatic first down. And well explained, Mickey D'Angelo out with the concussion, so uh, scary for the Southern Miss folks. For those of you who uh, have not traveled down to this part of the country, beautiful part, and the people are so nice there. Just a little SEC geography, you have Memphis as the major hub in the area here, then down to Oxford, where Ole Miss is, then down another hour, 15 from there, to Starkville, Mississippi State. We'll be there on Thanksgiving night. Yep. Then down here to Southern Miss, way down in uh, the southern part of the state. It's about 100 miles from New Orleans, 90 miles to Jackson, Mississippi, and about 90 miles from Mobile. Let's give you a little geography. Help him in. You help him? Yeah. Help you from the drive home tonight? Yeah. It's, uh, you driving? Yeah, I, I, I got it covered. Wally carries to Mario Williams with the tackle. No game there. Those of you just uh, surfing in here at uh, 1030 Eastern, 930 Central. Chance to remind you that Sports Center is on the way. The Big East and the ACC conversation over Notre Dame. A conversation about Brett Favre as well. Is he still the uh, MVP caliber quarterback, the former Southern Miss star? And the fact or fiction questions will include the Mac and the BCS. Uh, Brett's great accomplishments here. School record holding quarterback at Southern Miss. 
compares to Monday night game this week. Auburn look at Enzo. It's incomplete. Almost intercepted by Daniel Bullocks. Everybody join us. Twin Josh with picks here tonight. Coverage on the play by Daniel Bullocks. Next time we promote yep. Sports Center, I'll get you guys into that Mac DCL. Yeah, we've been about that for a while. Daniel, Notre Dame, a lot, of, a lot of stuff out there. You talked about Daniel and Josh Bullocks. Daniel was the senior by one minute. Oh, Josh was one minute later. So now he's got an older brother. How about that? You got twins, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's one minute, isn't it? One minute, That's ten. Quick, like, ten. Wow. There's been personality studies over the years that the one born first, different personality traits than the other one in terms of who acts like the older brother and all that stuff. Maybe we can get into it on the ride home tonight. The ride to New Orleans. <laughs> Mine kind of take turns. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's not really one or the other. It's, it's just kind of hand a baton over, depending on the day. <laughs> well, we're looking at that map. You're, you guys are going to New Orleans, right? Yes. Yeah. So, I'm going yeah. to Jackson. Uh, oh, you're not coming with us tonight? No, I'm going to Jackson. And I think the other guys are going to Mobile. Oh, okay. I, went, I did that last year. Is it? It's good. I went, with, I went with you. I went to New Orleans. New Orleans. Yeah. Stick with me. Comes to travel. Dustin Almond <laughs> rolls the pocket. <laughs> Can they hit a home run here? Going to the end zone. It is intercepted. Intercepted by Jarrell Pippen, a former walk-on at Nebraska, who's gotten a chance to play a fifth-year special teams impact the first couple of years. Comes up with the INT there. It is five turnovers for Southern Miss on the night. The latest, the Jarrell Pippins, INT. Well, congratulations to Jarrell Pippins, his first career interception coming there in the fourth quarter. Let's give you the game track. Those of you just joining us, it was 17-7 at the half. Jamal Lord has had a solid performance, 6 of 13 passing, two passing touchdowns, one rushing. The two passing touchdowns coming in the third quarter to Ross Pilkington and Isaiah Fluellen. Meantime, the black shirt defense has continued to stake its claim to stingiest to move the ball on in the nation. Southern Miss has snapped the ball 54 times for 163 yards. That is three yards per snap. Well, Lord's back out there. Yeah, that shows you what I know. Senior out of Bayonne, New Jersey. On the handoff to Corey Ross, the third string eye back who is snowed under by Rod Davis. And Chad Ruffin, the junior from New Orleans. There's Davis, linebacker who went back earlier for some fluids. Back here playing hard in the fourth quarter. Watch the scores go by. Sports Channel of the highlights. The Cubs losing tonight. Florida winning for the Marlins to get the wild card. And have eliminated the Phillies by taking them out all week. Ball fake. Oh, no. Play pass. Deep ball for the tight end. Harrion couldn't catch up to it. Matt Harrion hit all those uh, big shots down the field this year. Or last year. Four touchdowns, each one over 33 yards. Almost had a big one there. Well, for, for the opponents that play Nebraska later this year, you have to be prepared to take on not only the option by putting a lot of people up in the box, but you also have to be able to take the play action because that's something that Jamal Lord is getting more and more comfortable with. Nobody follows the tight end vertically downfield. Look at how open he is. You get law to sleep by defending the option and being physical and putting nine guys in the box. And when you commit too much, Turner Gill and the offensive staff upstairs sees that you're cheating and they'll go to that play action. They've done it a number of times tonight. Nice wiggle out of uh, Ross. On third down. He'll be shy of the first down and we'll have to punt the ball away. It seems simple, but it's something that last year they didn't necessarily have that ability to do on a consist consistent basis because I don't think they had guys that could get upfield vertically as much as they have this year. They have tight ends and receivers. It's be interesting to watch and they go up against better opponents to see if they can keep uh, keep this balanced attack if they need it. 
Nice punting night by Kyle Larson thus far. Adding to it there with a 60, 61, 62, 65, 66. Well, call it 66. Marty Aronoff says 67 yards, and he's the stat man supreme. Great kick by Larson. Timeout in Hattiesburg. Back here in Hattiesburg, all Nebraska. The Cornhuskers leading 31 to 7. And this is the debut of Damian Carter at quarterback for Southern Miss. True freshman, first throw is complete to Antoine Currington to the 14-yard line. Damian Carter went to high school at Isidore Newman High School, New Orleans, Louisiana. Mean anything to you? Eli Manning. You got it, pal. He's a true freshman. I read your notes. <laughs> He's a true freshman and... Uh, Jeff Bauer brought in two very talented athletic quarterbacks who might define the future of the position here at Southern Miss. And with the injury to D'Angelo, Carter becomes the number two quarterback, but you have to get him some experience, and these are his first snaps. Here he is on the option. We're getting a couple of yards. The package of offense he has is small. He'll run uh, his uh, few offensive plays here in quarter number four. There you see some of the numbers in his senior season. He and Jeremy Young out of Jackson, Mississippi, both came in as true freshmen, and it was Carter a little bit ahead of Young, thus he earned the number three role behind Almond and D'Angelo, and second half last week, all of a sudden, Damian Carter's the number two because Mickey D'Angelo's concussion problem has him out for at least uh, the next couple of games, potentially the rest of the season, if not longer. They have to medically clear him at some point before he can play again. Just like Nebraska trying to get Daly a true freshman some experience because he's the number two guy, Southern Miss kind of in the same Final boat. Snap, false start, on the offense, five-yard penalty, still third down. With that, with that injury to Mickey D'Angelo, you've got to get Carter some reps just in case Allman is either struggling or if he's, if he's injured, you're going to go to a true freshman. I would not be surprised if Carter was not the quarterback at by the middle of the end of this season because he's got more athletic ability than Dustin Allman, and I think he can beat Cincinnati with him. You can beat, uh, maybe you won't beat Alabama, but South Boy, you can win Conference USA with an athletic quarterback in this defense. Oh, we've seen athletic quarterbacks in this league over the last couple of years. Check out the arm. Looks good. Kenneth Johnson worked against his own and picks up the first down. Speaking of great athletic quarterbacks in Southern Mrs. Cass, not Brett Favre. Not this time, right, Jerry Punch? Mike, I got a trivia question for you. Name the quarterback in NCAA history, the very first guy to rush for a thousand yards and pass for a thousand yards in the same season they did right here in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. I, th I think you guys might know who that is. Well, I'm going to guess Reggie Collier since we're looking at him. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> that that might have been a dead giveaway, guys. That's, that's cheating. <laughs> we'll talk to Reggie in just a moment, guys. All right, Doc, let's watch first and ten here from the 22-yard uh, line. To freshman Carter. Sings it out to the tight end. Broden out to the 26. Go ahead, Doc. Well, one of the great All-Americans to play here from 79-82. And Reggie, I know, what does it say about this program when you can get a Nebraska to come here to Hattiesburg to play this football team? Well, it says an awful lot. I mean, uh, in the past, we've always had to go to their house and play. Whether it's Alabama, Auburn, Nebraska, whoever, we always had to go there. But to bring them here, I mean, it, it's, it's just tremendous for the school, the state, and the athletic program. Now you are back in this program and are very, very active in what's happening down the road. We showed the new building in the, in the south end zone and the north end zone. We show what's going to be built in the south end zone. What is your role here in the university? Well, at the, at the present time, I, I'm enrolled in school. Um, so I'm a student now, but I'm also helping the university in fundraising and, and, and whatever way I can. Whatever they ask me to do, I'm more than willing, ready, and able to help them. You have watched this young man we're watching now, Damian Carter, the true freshman out of New Orleans. And I know everyone talks about he's got sort of a, a Reggie Collier kind of arm and moves. Uh, he's impressed a lot of people. Well, he's very impressive. I mean, for a freshman to come in and he has something special about him. You know, it, it's kind of hard to put your finger on exactly what he does and how he does it. But just the way he goes about doing things says a lot about him. And, and to be a freshman to come in, I mean, and, he, and he's showing it right now. I mean, even though it's late in the game, he's showing a lot of poise, making some plays, and it's just a, uh, 
a sign of things to come here in Southern Mississippi with Damian. Reggie, you gave us a lot of memories here as a quarterback of Southern Miss, and we're looking at a young man that's probably going to give us a lot of memories for years to come. Hey, good luck back here with what's happening with the building program and Coach Bauer, and thanks for coming out of visiting for a few minutes. Hey, thank you. I appreciate it. Guys, Reggie Cole, you're one of the all-time greats to wear the black and gold here at Southern Miss. Yep, and then went on some of his professional football experience, including playing for Lee in the USFL. As a matter of fact, the ESPN Classic, hop yep. into our beautiful hotel here in yeah. Hattiesburg. Yeah. Uh, check that out last night. On <laughs> ESPN Classic. Reggie Collier playing. Scooter on the sideline. Lee Look at yeah. A great drive here for Carter. Five for five. And we get a whistle here and a timeout taken by Southern Miss. We'll talk about Reggie Collier. He's calling all his peeps. Just to check in. You see me looking good on TV? <laughs> we'll be right back. We'll talk about you now. <laughs> 31-7 here. As soon as we're done, Sports Center with Reese Davis and Kevin Frazier. Talking about the Big East and the ACC trying to get the spot for Notre Dame's presence in a conference, whatever that is. More on Brett Favre. Uh, still the man in the NFL as he gets set for the Monday night game at the new Soldier Field against the Bears. And a historic night in baseball. Carlos Delgado, as you saw in the bottom line of the Toronto Blue Jays, going deep four times. I think George Bell did that once in the old Blue Jay days. In any case, They'll have that covered, plus all the pennants, race, and wild card chase stuff. Option toss to Sean Moore. Heavy hit there on the sideline, but Moore picks up the first down. Chad Sievers, junior out of Nebraska, there with the pop. Davis Nebraska on the 49-yard line. First down. Lee, we're talking about your old quarterback in the USFL days, the former Southern Miss star, Reggie Collier. Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate it. The one thing that impressed me about Reggie is the fact that he's been out of school for years now. He played for me in, 19, uh, in 1985, but Reggie was out of school and came back is getting his sports administration degree. And I just can't say enough on how a former coach feels about a guy like Reggie Carter coming back and doing that. I got one more statement about Reggie Carter in a second. All right, from midfield, the true freshman, Damian Carter, who's looking really, really good on this drive. Caleb Hendricks with the catch. Uh, you got some of the second team defense in but, yeah, but still you can see yeah. you can see what these coaches love about him all right what else about reggie? one more thing about reggie in 1982 reggie collier took southern mississippi over to tuscaloosa and beat the bear 38 29 that young man broke bear bryant's 56 game home winning streak and bear bryant said that was the greatest quarterback athlete he ever coached against him. that kid right there reggie collier what a great young man to come back to get to school that's the best part of the story yeah, yeah, i'd right. love to see the pride that he has in his school oh, yeah. and the way the current players gravitate towards him and talk to him and lean on him for advice well there is carter's first incompletion of his college career after completing his opening six that one couldn't hook up with antoine currington <laughs> damian carter you could you, you could see what kind of future he has and so you got to keep in mind, this is a true freshman. I don't care if it's the second team Nebraska defense. I don't care if they're not blitzing the same way they were earlier against Dustin Allman. You can just see the, the live arm. You can see the athletic ability and also the presence that he has for being a young freshman. Oh, come back to the other side. Kenny Johnson holds on. A lot of people in traffic. He's going to lose a yard on a play that had a lot going on there. Boy, you talking about it, guys. We've seen two true freshman quarterback play here tonight. If Reggie Ball who won the job to start the season at Georgia Tech, the announcement from Ron Zook earlier this week, Chris Leak is now the starter at Florida. Brady Quinn sneaking around the chicken coop, as coach would say, with the Notre Dame situation. And we've already seen tonight Joe Daly, the true freshman, play here. And Carter now in for Southern Miss. For all these complex defenses and zone blitz and offensive packages, now, we're seeing big schools play true freshman quarterbacks here this year. One thing in common, though, those schools are losing. And when you lose, you've got to make a take change a and take a chance with the quarterback. Third and 10 from the 35. Carter's throw underneath. Kenneth Jackson accelerates to the 20 for a first down. So nice to see Kenneth That's Jackson playing here for Southern Miss. I've seen enough. I've seen enough. I've seen enough There's no way that Dustin Allman's going to play here anymore. I'm playing. Let me tell you, if I was the coach, I would not even hesitate. Sunday, I mean, tomorrow I bring them together and say, young man, you're the quarterback, because I tell you what, the guy's a better athlete than Allman. He's got a chance to win. You can beat Cincinnati. That's a nice young man. That's what I was going to say. You don't, nice you, don't, you don't say it 
with all due respect to Dustin Allman, it's be just because this guy is so good. No, no, I say, Dustin, you're a nice young man. We really look forward to having you. But the new quarterback is Damian Carter. Now, that's what I would do. Right? It's not the first team defense in there. I know what you're saying. I just they're not just throwing it out there. No, that's right. You have a decision to make. Jeff Bauer's team has two wins this year. They beat Memphis last time out, and before that, they won at UAB. We were there for that game. UAB's offensive coordinator, the former Heisman Trophy winner from Auburn, Pat Sullivan, is uh, suffering uh, with a diagnosis of cancer that we just found out about over the last couple of weeks. Jeff spoke with him uh, back yesterday, and all of us want to send our absolute best wishes and hopes and prayers for recovery to one of the good guys, Pat Sullivan. Option toss here to Sharon Moore, who's pushed out of bounds. Well, the second and short coming up. Uh, it just uh, reminds you of how quick things change. We're sitting in the office yeah. talking football with Pat three, three and a half weeks ago, and then a week later find out about the diagnosis. And uh, I know Doc Punch was in touch with him as well. And the whole college football community reaching out and helping wherever they can. And Pat, we just want you to know that our thoughts and prayers are with you as uh, you fight this battle that we hope you win. Second down and four, as we're inside of four and a half. The freshman Damian Carter, 13th play of this drive, is incomplete as he threw it on the short side with nobody open. I know it's the second team, but they're still same pride of the black shirts, trying not to allow that touchdown or even allow a point in the second half. That's something that uh, talking to these players, talking to both Polini, that's something that they're very proud of, and they don't want to they don't want to give that up. Not only is it something, a streak to be proud of, it also right. speaks volumes about the conditioning and how they try to wear teams down. Both Polini, the defensive coordinator here from Nebraska, is doing a great job. Third and four, here is the screen with more. Willie Amos, who has uh, been slow to recover from his knee injury in the lineup, makes the tackle at the five. A reminder of the Sports Center stories as they continue to speculate over Notre Dame's move, if that is the next move, and the big glaciers of everyone trying to fit new conferences. And uh, the history made by Carlos Delgado tonight in baseball. Plus the uh, wrap-up, all the significant baseball highlights and reaction. Coming up on SportsCenter. First and goal. Nebraska hasn't given up a point in the second half all year. They're not going to do it on that play. Minus three on the option with more. If they want to score a touchdown, I'd recommend some kind of a bootleg action with number two, bringing them to the wide field <laughs> over here and let him... Remember I promised Reggie Collier I'd do that? Yep, there it is. Boom, into the touchdown, Damian Collier. Now, Reggie he Collier. Said, he said you did, you yeah. used to do that breaking down film. Yeah, I know. You that, give it the old. That was, that that, that that was 1985. Is that the advice you gave him as a quarterback? You get out there in a flat and. Let me tell you, any guy right there, when the bear says the greatest quarterback and athlete he ever coached against is right there, ladies and gentlemen, that. That's a player. Is a player. And he's a player. And he's got, I'm telling you, the fact that he's coming back here to get his degree in sports administration, I just can't tell you how proud I am of Reggie Cargo. Step aside for a minute. Southern Miss had to take another timeout. Freshman learning on the job. As Carter takes a quarterback draw down to the one-yard line. Jarrell Pippins made the play. And we'll have third and goal coming up. Nice to see players like Pippins and uh, Willie Amos out there who've uh, fought for playing time. Pippins uh, getting that first career interception. Amos bouncing back from injury, and they're trying to maintain the great numbers. Uh, a lot of yards here in the fourth quarter, 115 after uh, this game's outcome has been decided after a terrific defensive show the first three and uh, movement up front we'll back them up five five snap false start on the offense five yard penalty still third down i don't think jeff Barr needs to be too discouraged about this situation basically 
and they had two chances, slim and none, to win this ball game. They can get themselves together and beat Cincinnati. Remember, they haven't been beaten in Conference USA, and if they continue to do this, they can go to the Liberty Bowl and win it all. And I think the quarterback, Damian Carter, is the most positive thing that this guy could take out of this ball game. I love that quarterback. That's I know the only thing, second, it's the only thing to take right. out of this game. What a defense shot. Yeah. He's taking snaps 17 on this drive. Slant cross touchdown. Oh, to Caleb Hendricks. And Damian Carter's first drive as a quarterback has opened some impressive eyes. 10 of 12 passing on that drive. 92 yards on his first drive Woo! as a college quarterback. Against the grid. Against, against that, uh, the defense that has not allowed a point in the second half. You can say it's the backups. I understand. They're not blitzing as much. I understand. But to be a true freshman, to go against that defense says a lot about him. And I don't know about you guys, but just from being up here, yeah. the difference I saw, not only the athletic ability, yeah. the confidence that he has yeah. under center for a true freshman. That's a different feel there when he gets under center from what we've seen tonight. Darren McCaleb's extra point is 105 in a row for wow. Southern Miss dates back over a few years. And I would put Damian Carter in tomorrow. I wouldn't mess around, but give him split. You know those things. We'll sure. Two yeah. quarterbacks. Put him you. in there. We got you. Let him have the whole time. Get him in the system yeah. and then go with him. We got you. I think everybody probably agrees with you watching his performance here on that drive. I'd be just surfing over. Top of the hour here. Sports Center's coming up. We've told you several times these stories are on the docket. They're also going to discuss the uh, Mac Factor Fiction, which I always look forward to. Is the Mac uh, deserving of a BCS berth now? I, I think there's a severe overreaction going on. <laughs> is, that, yeah. is that a serious debate? Or is that just for fun? Knee-jerk reaction of last weekend. Uh, of course, and, and, and that's the point. And it's not taking anything away from the Mac. No, congratulations. I, people have known the Mac plays very good yeah. football, but the BCS is not going to be complete, or, or any system, <laughs> is not going to be completely changed because of what happens on one Saturday. How, yeah. about, how about getting a few more bowl bids before you worry about the BCS? Oh, sure. Absolutely. Well, they have two right now? Mm -hmm. They have two. Okay. Right. I'm just saying. I... Luke Johnson has an onside kick attempt coming here. And all the players, receivers and DBs with good hands for Nebraska await. Watch the execution. Right into the hands of Pilkington. That's a touchdown from earlier tonight. The former baseball player out of Fort Collins, Colorado, pulls it in. It'll just be another win for Frank Solich. You know, poor guy getting all beat up there in Lincoln. Sixth best among active Division I-A coaches at age 59. He's uh, done all of his coaching in the state of Nebraska. High school coaching, uh, the freshman team, running backs coach for Tom Osborne. I'd like to follow that. The uh, legendary Bob Devaney with his two national titles and then Tom Osborne's uh, quarter century run that uh, ended with three NCAA titles. Now uh, U.S. representative representing the state of Nebraska in the House in Washington, D.C. Daly in a quarterback and the true freshman's first down handoff is to Robin Miller seeing his first action here of the night. When you look at Frank Solich, you know, he's a short, compact, tough-looking guy. Look at him. He was the only fullback to rush for 200 yards in the history of Nebraska. The only guy. In one in game. One game. One game. Fullback. Two, fullback. The only fullback to run 200 yards in one game. And the thing I like about him the most, he was a local high school coach for 14 years before he got a chance to go to college football coaching. What a, what a man. To me. He's a, he looks like a guy that works off the nervous energy on the treadmill, <laughs> on, the, on the weights. Great shape. Oh, Miller man. turns the corner. Miller to the house. Give him six. Touchdown, Nebraska. Touchdown, Nebraska. 47 yards for Robin Miller. And the opportunity for some of the other players hey, don't get a chance. This is wild. This is wild. Wild. All right. Now, let me ask you something. Did you notice the way? Well, let me tell you something. We, did, we have a quarterback a controversy. Did what, you notice smile? how the way Joe... Yeah. Daly took that team down. Oh, oh boy, he took him right down. He there. took him right down. Score. I want to go back to the smile. That's great to see from Frank Solon. Oh man, let's get a replay. Man. Robin Miller, the senior eye back, who, uh, although a scholarship athlete, did he had uh, three carries for 15 yards as a sophomore. 
five carries as a redshirt freshman, able to get a touchdown. So nice to see one of those kids get a touchdown like that. Scores of 44, 43, and 47 yards in this half. Watch it. Come on. Don't get to see this often in a game. <laughs> Proud of one of the seniors Woo. who hung in there for him. Yeah. Nebraska fans uh, pretty happy with their performance. The players as well. 21 there, Robin Miller out of uh, the Northwest. Kent Washington had a 10-yard, uh, one-yard touchdown run <laughs> in his sophomore season against Iowa State. And gets his second career touchdown there to make it 38 to 14. A lot of points here tonight. Didn't get it. Now he's going to go back in the end zone to touch it down. He has to do that to avoid the ball being live and Nebraska recovering for six. We've had so many great September weekends with matchups. We've been spoiled a little bit. This is not a terrific three or four big matchups. There are some games that are sneaking under the radar, as you guys like to say. But I think this Saturday could be a very interesting one. At West Point, I can't say anything more. College game day. College game day is at, at West Point. That, to me, is one of the great places of all time to go to as a college football coach and as an analyst. It'll be exciting to, oh. to get a chance to, to go there as far as other games this weekend. I think in the Pac-10, Washington okay. State and Oregon is, is probably the marquee matchup uh, you know, after what Oregon did against Michigan. I'll tell you, the other game to watch out in the Pac-10, <laughs> after seeing Aaron Rodgers in person a couple weeks ago against Utah and what he can do now that they put him in as a starting quarterback, Pete Carroll's a defensive genius, but that'll be really a great match as far as X's and O's. Jeff Tedford and with this Aaron Rodgers and, of course, Pete Carroll and that defense. I think Cal could make that a little bit more interesting than people think. I think Iowa's got to watch out for a letdown going to Michigan State. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know Michigan State lost to Louisiana Tech there, but Iowa's undefeated. Everybody's talking about how good they are. They have Michigan coming up the following week in uh, Iowa. Forget about it, sweetheart. Iowa's defense. Yeah, could be. Iowa's defense is better yeah. this year than they were. I'm going to give you another one, sweetheart. Right. That Cal team will be lucky to cross the 50-yard line. Okay, good. Good. We need USC good stuff. is a good kill of them, USC. All right. P.D. Causey with that reception. Two more completions here for Carter. He's 12 of 14 since he's come in the game, the true freshman. Remind you that SportsCenter comes her way momentarily. As soon as SportsCenter's on, we will get ready for ESPN News. And post-game. Good. I don't know if it's a post-game extra. Tonight. It is post-game extra tonight. How about motion? No, we ESPN motion. motion huh? Log on to ESPN.com for that. To preview our next stop, West Virginia, Miami. Full jet service for next Thursday night. Carter, another completion. This one once again goes to Petey Causey. Petey Causey. Wrangler, five-star, player of the game. First down, Southern Miss. Any thoughts, guys? Player of the game tonight? I I, my, my player of the game is the Nebraska defense You're not as a whole. No. Mine is Jamal Lord. You're getting it. Uh, because I heard him already say right. it. I heard you. <laughs> Jamal Lord. <laughs> well, you want to be honest, right? But you don't know what we are hearing in our headset, oh, please. Oh, okay. Well, that's, I didn't want to think of it. <laughs> Two touchdowns passing, one rushing. And more confidence in the passing game. I think the headlines tonight for Nebraska, their defense comes on the road and handles the test. And uh, Jamal Lord's passing with more confidence. Freshman Carter dancing and threw it away. That's a smart play for a true freshman there. And the fans recognize that as well. I think the fans are ready to see Carter under center next week, too. You guys uh, give me a thought on Nebraska here as they head into an off Saturday and get set for Troy State and then at Missouri after that. I think at Missouri could be a game worth uh, keeping an eye, an eye on just because, again, it's on the road. They played so well tonight. Brad Smith containing him. It'll be the black shirts going up against Brad Smith, an offense that's capable of putting up points. But as long as they continue to play with confidence on defense and play assignment football and play with uh, so much emotion, yeah. that, the defense will keep them in every game they play. I think they'll beat Troy State. They'll outscore Missouri. Missouri gave up like 250 yeah. points in Middle Tennessee State. Yep. Texas A&M won't beat them at home. Iowa State won't beat them home. They'll go into Texas undefeated on November the 1st. Carter hit as he threw. Complete again to Causey. We'll get one more snap out of this if they hustle. Six seconds remaining here in the game. It's so bizarre to look at the Nebraska schedule. They don't play Oklahoma. It's happened before. Not the first time it's happened, but it's just... Oh, they will eventually. Yeah, this year. They don't play them. It, it's just... Oh, Big 12 champions. Oh, they will. They could. Oh. That's what I'm saying. I didn't see that on the schedule. Oh, no, wait. You yeah. picked Kansas I'm, no, I'm State. I'm just saying if okay. they get there, yeah. okay. they would play them. 
If Kansas State plays Nebraska, you got to go with Kansas State because you already picked them. Uh, if Al Roberson is ever inserted back in the lineup, I won't have a problem doing that. Uh, I don't think so. I think the black shirts will beat Kansas uh, State. I can't Guys, you can that. continue this conversation. Unfortunately, we have to sign off. This game is over. Nebraska to moves now. to 4-0, number 11 in the country, and Jamal Lord, in his senior season, continues to handle the criticism and continues to perform quite well. 38-14, our final. See you on ESPN News for the post-game wrap with Lee Corso, Kirk Herb, Street, Jerry Punch, Mike Tirico. Thanks for watching this presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Good night from Hattiesburg. Off we go to SportsCenter.